Banged and bruised, Marcus Tuiasosopo leads the Huskies in Arizona Stadium and a big game with the Wildcats. The Washington Huskies can almost smell the roses after knocking off first place Stanford last week. Now the dogs will try to vanquish the memory of Ortiz Jenkins' fantastic flip. Tui and OJ hook up for a duel in the desert. It's homecoming at Arizona Stadium. A capacity crowd expected, and the Washington Huskies hope to spoil the party with a victory over the Wildcats in the heat of the desert. Hi, everybody. I'm Todd Pickett. Along with Sonny Six Killer, we welcome you to Pac-10 football on Fox Sports Net. The Washington Huskies can take a big step toward the Rose Bowl and Pac-10 championship with a victory today, but it is a big obstacle. This Arizona team is tough, especially here in Tucson, Sonny. I tell you, they always are. If the Huskies get off to a great start like they did two years ago with a big play to start the game, they're going to be able to have Arizona on their heels. And to get off to a big start, they'll have to get another big game from Marcus Tuiasosopo. A week ago, the first ever Division I quarterback to pass for 300 yards and run for 200 in a game. But Sonny, he was banged up in that game, and he hasn't done a whole lot this week to get ready. He hasn't taken a lot of snaps this week, Todd, in practice, and it gives J.K. Scott a lot of opportunities. But number 11 needs to be on the field. He's a great leader besides his athletic ability, running and throwing the football. But the Huskies, he's the leader, and he's got to be on the field. He might be the one guy who likes having a little warm weather just to get loose <laughs> yeah. for today's game. Talk about being on the field. That's exactly where you'll find Dennis Northcutt for Arizona. On both sides of the ball, on special teams, one of the truly great all-purpose guys in the country. Very gifted young man. Dennis Northcutt has worked hard in the offseason to improve his speed. He's always been able to get by defenders, but I tell you, Punt receiving and punt return yardage right there. You see third in the NC two A's. This guy, keep your eye on number eight. And keep the ball away from him if you're the Huskies. Washington's in control of its own destiny. Rick Neuheisel likes that spot. We're in it. Now we need to finish it. And uh, it's going to be hard because uh, going to Tucson and playing in front of uh, their crowd and playing a very talented team, maybe the most talented team in the league, uh, is, is a tall order. But... You know, we're where we are, and we wanted to be here. Now let's take advantage of it. It's the type of challenge that coaches love and teams relish. The Huskies are where they want to be in November. Arizona, Washington, come up next. The Washington Huskies taking the field at Arizona Stadium as they get set to face the Arizona Wildcats. Arizona will have the ball first as we get set to get things underway. Down in the desert and some different conditions for the Huskies today. Temperature already at 90 degrees, dry, a little bit of a breeze, whirling around in gusts from time to time, but a sunny, hot, and mostly clear day. A few clouds blocking the sun from time to time, but they're not having a lot of impact at all. Dick Tomey, the head coach of the Arizona Wildcats, in his 13th season, the dean of Pac-10 coaches, the all-time career wins leader, not only at Arizona, but at Hawaii, one of only three coaches to have that distinction. Rick Neuheisel in his first year as the head coach of the Washington Huskies after starting his collegiate head coaching career at Colorado. And I'm sure Sonny, he would like to see his team for once get out in front instead of pulling that fourth quarter come from behind stuff they had the last couple weeks. Well, I'd like to stay close with this uh, gifted squad. Bobby Wade. The up man, Larry Kroon, behind him as the Wildcats try to disguise their kick return alignment a little bit here. And one thing I know you're going to be interested in watching today as we see Marcus Tuiasosopo warming up on the sidelines is the range down here in the desert that John Anderson might have on his kicks, not only on kickoffs, but maybe for a long field goal. Well, I think both kickers, and you're right about the field goal, but I think both kickers need to make sure that they, with the skilled people of Arizona, that the kickoffs are long and they're high, and the punting as well is high. The freshman who's taken over the kicking duties the last couple weeks set to get this one underway. And I think that one's high and deep enough. Hip carries nine yards into the end zone. That's exactly what they want. The Wildcats will start at the 20. Good deep kick. You see part of the crowd on hand here at Arizona Stadium as 
Bowl officials on hand as well. Senior quarterback Keith Smith set to lead the Wildcats out onto the field. You see his numbers for the season. He has taken over the lion's share of the quarterbacking duties now rather than uh, splitting as much time with Ortiz Jenkins. Winnick the eighth back in and Candidate who does the majority of the work up front. Carries for a little over a yard. We take a look at the starting lineups for the Arizona Wildcats first on offense. As you see Trunk Candidate coming back to the huddle. On the offensive line, Savea is the only senior up front for the Wildcats. Candidate, an outstanding running back, closing in on the Arizona career rushing record. Smith, a little swing for Candidate through his hands, incomplete. And it'll bring up a third down and long for Arizona as we take a look at the starting defensive alignment for Washington. Jabari Issa heading the front three today along with Mulatao, Pele, and Triplett. Huskies hoping to get some more pressure. Lester Towns, the second leading tackler along with Williams, Daniels, and Farms. Anthony Vontura, big game a week ago with a pair of interceptions. Akbar, Williams, and Smith round out the secondary for the Huskies. Lester Towns right there, Todd. you got to watch out for not only Northcutt as a receiver, but Ortiz Jenkins, the backup quarterback, is split out wide to the right here. Under some pressure, he gets away from one rush. Throws. Incomplete. Underneath his intended receiver, Manu Maliuna, the tight end. Good pressure on the initial rush from Jafar Williams. Excellent pressure this time. The dog's getting a good pressure up the side. Jafar Williams coming from the outside. Misses him, but Jabari Issa is there to stick those long arms out there to disrupt the throwing of Keith Smith. Joe Jarzinka back to return the punt of Chris Palick, eighth in the conference, with an average of under 40 yards a kick. And before he can take the snap, timeout called by Washington. Oh boy, that is one you don't want to use right there. Only 10 men on the field, and they have to burn a timeout in the opening minute of play on punt return. Little talk over on the sideline as they uh, try to figure out who body number 11 is supposed to be. Well, that's not going to make Coach Houck very, Bobby Houck for the Huskies real happy. You work all week during practice, Todd, and uh, first time in the game. The series between the two teams in favor of the Dogs, and in fact, they've done very well down here in the desert. Uh, that last year's score was doing pretty well for Washington until about oh, the last minute or so of the game, and we'll... Uh, Enough said about that one for the time being, but to have that kind of a record here in Tucson is pretty impressive. It certainly is, and it goes way back and a lot of good games down here on last, well, two years ago, the last time the Huskies were in Tucson, it was a big scoring day for the Huskies. Started off with an opening kickoff that went all the way, and it just snowballed from there. I mentioned before, uh, Dick Tomey, the career win leader. You saw him on the sidelines in Arizona and Hawaii. Only two other coaches have done that. Okay. You name either one. <laughs> we'll Go save, ahead. We'll save it for later. Well, we continue to uh, spend some time wandering about here as uh, the timeout forcing a long break. And since we've got the time to do it, I'll tell you who the other two coaches are. We might as well not about killing trivia early, right? Bear Bryant's one of them. All-time career win leader at both Alabama and Kentucky, although that might change somewhere down the line. Well, we talked a little bit about Washington's success down here in Tucson and Sonny alluded to the game back in 1997 and it was a uh, big win for the Huskies on that afternoon. Jawarren Hooker got it started Sonny. Yeah he did it. Nice short kickoff Jawarren Hooker not playing this season but I tell you that was exciting a uh, good way to start the ball game for coach Lambright at that time and and then the pick 
Jermaine Smith coming up with a nice pick of Keith Smith and running it back and really putting Arizona on their heels. 58-28 in favor of the Huskies in that game. Jarzinka fumbles the line drive punt, but then covers it at the 46-yard line. Leon Callen there to cover for Arizona. That was an interesting punt from Pollock. He kind of took a run three steps to the right. It looked like a quick kick from a quarterback on a third down situation and just line drived it. You see that big bandage or spongy hip there of uh, Tuiasa Sopo. Hopefully he can improve on those big numbers he's already done this year in 99. A little extra cushioning for the Husky quarterback as he comes to the field. Leading the Pac-10 in total offense starting today's game. Shaw gets the first carry as he starts at running back. And Deshaun Polk leads the tacklers for Arizona. We take a look at the rest of the starting offense for Washington. And a switch across the front as Dasky comes in, and he'll see some time at the offensive line position today for the Husky Silvers, Ben Ward, and Connell there. Connell a little bit banged up and may not see a whole lot of action either. Todd Elstrom gets the start today as Chris Jurgens still bothered by his sprained ankle. Stevens and Shaw there. Wes Call out on the field as well on the offensive line for the Huskies. And timeout taken by Marcus Tuiasa Sopo. Well, fortunately, their first half timeouts, but uh, that's still not what you want to do. We've played a minute and 40 seconds, and Washington has had two of its three timeouts go by the wayside. While we uh, have a moment, we'll take a look at the starting defensive alignment now for the Arizona Wildcats. And again, a lot of youngsters across the front. Joe Tafoya with six sacks leads Arizona in that category. Luna, Frazier, and Maroon joining him there. Polk and Pierce at the uh, backers along with Marcus Bell who had 21 tackles against the Huskies in last year's game and was named the Pac-10 Defensive Player of the week for that effort. And Hunter, Payne, Jones, Gales in the secondary for Arizona. Yeah, Leland Gales played ball at Kennedy High School and from Renton. There's a good look. Kyle Ben's done a great job this season. The whole line has really gelled. Really made things happen for this offense. Paul Arnold in the backfield this time for Washington. And before he can take the handoff, we've got another whistle. It's been a busy start here for our referee, <laughs> Jim Springer. A lot of timeout signals and now a couple flags as well. Rest of the crew as we, well, we'll wait for Jim's call here. Good ball. Ball start. Offense. Five-yard penalty. And while they march those five yards off, Dennis Angel is the umpire. Royce Cooley, the head linesman. Fred Gallagher, the line judge. Jack Herb, the field judge. Harvey Jones, the side judge. And Jack Foliard the back judge today. Yeah, kind of a rough start to get into this ball game, but you have to remember Tuyasa Sopo didn't take any snaps in practice this week, and maybe that's a result of the linemen not being on the same page. I thought it was because you took all the kids swimming yesterday at the hotel. Trying to get away, and down he goes on his first drop back. The Wildcats had nine sacks against UCLA a week ago. Joseph Tafoya leading the tackle for Arizona, the guy we featured. Well, the leading, the leading tackler, our number four tackler, but six sacks. You see the stunt they did. He looped around, come, came in, and he looked like he really wanted to pound that hip in the turf of Tuyasa Sopo, and he came up a little shaken from that. Sonny, you thought going in today that Washington might try to go to the air more and try to protect Marcus, not get him out exposed on the runs. Well, you hope when you call those plays that you can get the ball off and gone, but unfortunately the Huskies could not that play. Shaw on a draw on third and long. He's not going to go anywhere as he swarmed under. Tafoya leading the tacklers along with Idris Haroon, and Washington will be forced to punt. Well, that start was ugly from the get-go, and you look at Tuiasa Sopo right there hobbling badly, but again, Arizona is so aggressive shooting the gaps and coming up and being aggressive that you're not going to find too many holes, at least not as of yet. And a very good rush defense for the Wildcats, as always. Ryan Fleming on the punt, averaging just under 42 yards per kick. And Dennis Northcutt back deep for Arizona. He leads the conference in punt return yardage and is third in the country. 
Good looking kick that time. Northcutt just outside the 10. And the Huskies bottle him up very well that time. Hooks leading the tacklers along with Ben Madavi. No score, three and a half minutes in. The Husky defense will be back on the field against the Wildcats. Welcome back to Arizona Stadium. The Wildcats getting set for their second drive of the day. Candidate had tried to cut it back, and the Huskies not only filled the gaps very well, Darrell Daniels did a nice job coming back and bringing him down for the short game. Well, you're right. Darrell Daniels using his quickness to get up into the hole and grabbing the lower feet, or lower feet, the feet of a drunk <laughs> candidate. <laughs> Sometimes How low you can you go? <laughs> uh, well, he'll switch to the upper feet in muddy weather, right? But great job by Darrell Daniels. Wildcats going to a trips formation. And so far, the Husky run defense has been pretty effective. Quick slam and complete, breaking it for extra yardage is Bobby Wade. Young man takes it out to the 35-yard line, the freshman from Phoenix. Guy who got the winning touchdown in their victory over Washington State. Big gain here. Yeah, Bobby Wade, the freshman, is pretty nifty on his feet. And when you're doing a little quick slant, you've got to make sure you get a helmet on him. That time, Daryl Daniels was a little unsure of how he's going to make the play, and Wade did a great job of knifing through there, Todd. Sonny, it looked like the Huskies were a little slow breaking to that one. Yeah, it, you could tell that Keith Smith was looking at Wade the whole route. Got to be a little quicker in, in the reaction time. Smith checking off with Ortiz Jenkins on this play as the two of them point. And again, finds a wide open wide receiver. It's Wade just over the 40 yard line before he's driven back. Williams on the stop for the Huskies. Well, let's watch to the right side. You'll see Wade, a little zone defense being played by the Huskies. Everybody going to their designated area, and he's just settling down short of the deep coverage of Akeem Akbar, and a nice throw by Keith Smith. The Wildcats who lead the conference in rushing find its success through the air so far against Washington. Winnick, the H-back, goes back into the backfield now and some play action. Open again as Northcutt wide open deep into Washington territory before he's finally chased out of bounds by Anthony Von Tour. That's a tough duty out there when you're one-on-one -on -one with the explosive Dennis Northcutt. You see him in the slot position. He went down and just kind of straight square out, but Von Tour bit on him going on the inside and a nice throw, nice play by Arizona. You can see the speed. 31 yard gain for Northcutt. And Arizona will go to work at the Washington 29 yard line. Candidate. Bottled up again, white jerseys everywhere. Great job by the front line. Akbar and Issa there to bring him down in a late strip by Hairston. <laughs> There's a couple old familiar faces uh, down there, Marcus Hairston being one of them, but Mac Tuiaea, 78, contributed on this play. You see Big Mac in there holding his own out there, not letting the slippery candidate come back around. He likes to reverse his field, and he picks up big yardage that way. Sonny, that's a great fundamental play there. He doesn't get a tackle, but he prevents them from maybe breaking it back. Exactly, and that's what you have to do against the talent of that guy, and Jabari Issa has to be big in the middle. Tackle for loss, which doesn't happen all often with Candidate. Smith time now as he rolls, trying to lob for his tight end, batted. Maliuna, Mano Maliuna out of bounds. He nearly made that grab off the deflection, but could not keep the feet in. You took a look at that young man before the game. There's Williams on the coverage. You said he's an impressive figure down there on the field. And he's a young man as well. He says just as big, big boy. And right here you see Keith Smith delaying long enough to get the ball off. Kind of a prayer throw, be honest with you, with double coverage back there. And Almost came down with the big play. Nearly got answered. Von Tour and Curtis Williams both there. And a look at Mano Maliuna. He wanted to go to Dennis Northcutt that time on the post route. Good coverage by the Huskies. And he saw Smith go to a secondary receiver. Play clock down at three. Smith with a spread formation out of the shotgun. Runs draw. 
Huskies read it well and they drop him after a short gain. Again, Sonny, a case of really staying true and Towns brings him down. You really have to against these guys. You know, they're so talented, you know, not only as Trunk Candidate and Dennis Northcutt, but the two quarterbacks, Keith Smith or Teach Jenkins, if you're not watching out for them, they both can throw the ball, but here's another thing we like to do. Quarterback draws, rollouts, and right there, good tackle, Lester Towns filling the hole and making the play. Now, field goal kicking has been a problem for the Wildcats this year, although they found some success a week ago. But on fourth and long here, they're going to go for it. Well, there's not any time left. They're trying to try and draw the Huskies off sides, but not going to work to lay a game. Well, it's going to back them up even further and really put a, a test on the walk on freshman unless they decide to pooch punt here Offense. and see if they'll bottle Washington penalty. up. Still fourth down. Because that's going to take it back and make it about, well, it'd be heck of almost a 50-yard kick now. Yeah, I'm not sure the if the is going to come out. Yeah. If the Arizona coaches are on the same page. I'm not quite. He's going to go out and try to attempt to draw the defense off, Todd. You need to get under that center and, and look like you're going to run, run a play. Run a little bluff, exactly. Pallet trying to send this one into the coffin corner. Jarzinka signals fair catch. Takes it outside the 10 yard line. Ball never got to the sidelines. And the Huskies will have it against Arizona's defense. Not quite the desert swarm level of play, but still a very good defensive unit for the Wildcats. Huskies will have it just outside the 10 when we return to Tucson. Part of the pageantry at Arizona Stadium. Only it's purple pageantry as they're out full force again to watch the Huskies on the road. Conniff carrying off the left side. He got a couple before he was driven back, but that's about all he got. Deshaun Polk leading the tacklers for Arizona that time. Got some help from Joe Tafoya. Yeah. Deshaun Polk is a heck of a player, I'll tell you. Watch 31 coming in there and taking him on head on. That was a nice collision in there. Polk, the number three tackler on this squad. Big boy, too, 230 pounds. Sonny, a welcome sight for Husky fans as Chris Jurgens comes out on the field. There you see with the nine sacks, they held UCLA to negative yardage a week ago. Looking for Jurgens on his first trip out. He has the catch and the first down for Washington. Marcus Tuiasi Sopo is probably the happiest guy to see one of his top hands guys out there. Well, Chris Jurgens again with that bad ankle suffered last week is a nice welcome addition to that staff. And, and you see him still hobbling just a little bit. You know, it takes a couple weeks for those ankles to come around, but there's a nice throw, good out route, and that's to the good side for Chris Jurgens. Leland Gales on the coverage for Arizona, but the Huskies pick up a first down, get a little bit of green behind them now. Conniff back in, and he'll take the dive off the right side. Again, just a couple of yards as the Wildcats are tough along the front line, the front four. Tafoya and Polk both there again on the stop. Well, against this defense, they do a lot of funny stuff, Todd. I, you know, they move Polk around. And he's the flex guy, they call him, but he really just kind of jumps around wherever he wants to and eventually gets into the defensive set. But... It takes a while to get your offensive line geared up and get on the same page. Neil Austin in the lineup. He's at the bottom of your screen. Split to the outside of Elstrom and there's four wide out set. And the pressure shown by the Wildcats. Inside batted, intercepted. Flag down on the play as well. Greg Payne Jr. with the interception. But let's see which way this one's going to go. Sonny, you think it's a break for the Huskies? Yes, I do. I believe they were offside. On Arizona, yes. One of the guys stunning on the left side, and so they avoid a turnover. It looked like Deshaun Polk, the guy we were just talking about, jumping up in the hole 31 on the left side. It's hard to see from that angle. Offside. But defense. Five-yard penalty. Nice defensive play there. Down. Good interception by Payne, but it doesn't count. That little slant route has been the... It's been the bugaboo for Washington all year long with little bounces and deflections like yes, that. Would you go down to Carl Durrell's booth and tear that page out, please? Uh, no, I, I don't give him any suggestions. No, He's doing a fine job. That's true. 
Well, they dodge a bullet there, and let's see if they're able to profit from it. Five yards as well, giving him a second and short. Down the line in the pitch for Shaw. He'll be close to the marker, but I think a little bit short. Rafael Jones in for Arizona, along with Alex Luna making the tackle, and Jones getting some playing time, bouncing back from some disciplinary problems. There are the numbers for Maurice Shaw. Of course, he put the game away with what turned out to be the game-winning touchdown on that long run a week ago against Stanford. Yeah, he did. He, finally healthy, I believe, as we've been talking about him as the season's progressed. And Willie Hurst still a little banged up with that rib injury, and, and Maurice Shaw getting the opportunity. They did pick up enough for the first down. Stevens comes back in as well at the tight end spot. From the 34, Conniff a little room this time. He just puts his head down and goes. Yes, he does. And on that old line, West Call, number 74, getting an opportunity to start today with uh, Kurt Connell's ankle still a little banged up. Sunny, a little medical tension there on the sidelines as well as uh, Daryl Daniels is being looked at. Looks like he's holding his left shin. Could have been kicked, could be a number of things, but hopefully he can get back in the ball game. Well, here's a new one. Look who's at the bottom of the screen. Conniff is the wide receiver. <laughs> Five in the pattern this time as they empty it out. Batted away, nearly picked again. Stevens, the intended receiver, and Rafael Jones was a step from taking that all the way. Well, that was a scary one right there, Todd. I tell you, he would have been untouched to the end zone. Watch Stevens in the inside set right there. Ball should have been gone long ago. And when you have an inside defender, you got to throw to the outside shoulder. That time you see the ball going to the inside, and that's not where you want to throw the football. Guys like Jones are. <laughs> Hanging in there looking for that one. <laughs> Drooling <laughs> for those. Wildcat fans raise a little noise on third and long. Austin in the alignment again. Good pickup, looking long. Harris nearly made that grab, could not pull it down one-handed. Kelvin Hunter on the coverage for Arizona. Harris thinking uh, he was interfered with. He's busy talking to the lineman over on that side. Right here, he looks like he has a pretty good angle for the ball. I just think he lost the sight of it because from that side, Todd, he did hook him. But anyway, what I'm saying, trying to tell you, he's looking back in the sun, so it is a little tougher to pick up the football. But it doesn't help to have somebody hanging onto your left arm. I can see where he had room for a complaint that time. Fleming set to punt once again. North cut there. Another nice high kick by time. Fleming. Northcutt gets the corner and then takes it out of bounds. A return of 22 yards following the punt and gives Arizona a good field position. Wildcats will have it. We're still scoreless in the first quarter in Tucson. Marcus Tui Asasopo trying to keep well hydrated. Back in Tucson, no score between Washington and Arizona. The Huskies trying to get a little revenge for a year ago when Ortiz Jenkins scored late on perhaps the play of the year in college football. And yeah, the Huskies still remember that play. Revenge for his great play that he made. And uh, I just remember just not being able to breathe, just being shocked. I was just, you know, I just couldn't believe it. But it was a good play, you know, and you stand on his feet, and they won. It's been Keith Smith all the way so far for the Wildcats as he pitches to Candidate on first down. To EIA sliding down the line to lead the tacklers along with Hakeem Akbar. And Huskies had hoped that Mac Tuiaia would get some playing time. He's looking pretty good so far, Sonny, yes, his first is. game back. He, he definitely is. He's worked hard. Trying to get back into playing shape and get cleared by the medical staff to get on the field again. And you're going to have to really step up and stop this candidate. I tell you, I hated to see that play because he gets around the corner, he steps up, he's really firing in there. You see the offense taking a little break right there, trying to stay cool in the cool zone. 
Uh, nice to have Mack as well for added depth in the heat. A little play action again by Smith, trying to screen back, and Candidate has a wall of blockers in front of him. Blows by them, and he's down to the Washington 30-yard line before he gets dropped by Levi Madrietta. This has always been a big play for Arizona. They love to run these throwback screens, and you can't ask for a better back to receive them than Trunk Candidate. Look at that wall right there, I tell you. I thought he was gone in this play, but watch that hit. Levi Madrietta, the freshman, coming up and really, the ball was really fumbled, laying the floor. and out of bounds, placed at the spot of the fumble. First down. You heard the explanation from Jim Springer. You see all-purpose yardage leaders in the Pac-10 conference, and the Wildcats with two of them, but that's really about as far as they go in terms of talent. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Northcutt out wide, he leads. He's the only guy with over uh, 100 yards in every category in the all-purpose delineation. Candidate on the pitch. Trying to find a spot again to cut back, and Farms wraps him up around the ankles. Sonny, this Washington front seven has done a great job of staying true in its gaps so far against Candidate. You've got to stay in your responsibility, and, and they really are doing that, Todd. You're absolutely right. Look at Farms right there, hanging on, making sure that the play gets forced back inside where you've got people coming flying to the football. Good support all the way around oh, by Washington that time. Ortiz Jenkins checking back in along with Bobby Wade for the Wildcats. They'll split out along with Leon Callen in the jumbo package, the trips formation that's bundled to the top of your screen. And now Arizona's going to have to use a timeout. timeout. North Cut and Smith Arizona. looking over Number and one. realized that they were running out of time and out of position as well, and they'll take a timeout now. So both teams are uh, really not going to have a whole lot to work with in the uh, two-minute drill <laughs> if we get to that at the end of the half. Tonight after the game, an encore presentation of Sunday Night Fights, a 10-round heavyweight bite, Jorge Luis Gonzalez taking on Tommy Martin. Gonzalez 28-5 with 26 KOs. On the same card, WBC Continental America's light heavyweight champion, Ray Berry, will defend his title against Derek Harmon. That's Gonzalez against Martin, Berry against Harmon tonight after the game, right here on Fox Sports Net. Rescue band, you see they're conserving their strength here early on. They're not getting too flamboyant, too wild in the first quarter. Then it's going to be a long afternoon in the sun. Long afternoon with about 4,500 Husky fans, if not closer to 5,000. They've got them separated down here in the near end zone to the right and in the end zone far to the left. So we've got them all over the place down here. The Huskies are everywhere. A few sections of purple here at Arizona Stadium. Kind of a neat setting here, too, right amongst uh, the middle of the city. Buildings all around the campus. Close by the McHale Center as we get set now for this second down play for the Wildcats. Northcutt going in motion as they open it up. Toss out to him on a little swing now. Got around Kelly, cuts back and breaks a couple more. And finally, Madrietta leads the tacklers that time. Akbar also there. Simple play just to get him out in the open, Sonny. Well, it's, uh, it's, this is the true wide receiver screen where Northcutt goes out and all the wide receivers act like the, the block. Watch this on the left. They're the blockers for Northcutt. Running off a little bit, trying to get some of the defenders going, and a nice little hold job there on Anthony Kelly, not being able to get to where he needs to be to cut Northcutt back inside, but good job. He, there's an example of how dangerous this guy is. Power formation in the backfield now for the Wildcats for the first time. Lance Briggs, the up back. And they'll give it to him on third and short through the Huskies, and he'll take it down inside the 15-yard line. Jermaine Smith brought him down there. Briggs has only carried 14 times all season, and uh, they fooled him a little bit there, sending Candidate away. Yeah, nice little quick hitter up the middle. Uh, looked like a quick trap from Arizona coming inside. You don't expect this very much when you have Trunk Candidate, but... When you have success at tailback, you can come back and run these quick hitters and keep the defense off sides. They stay with that look. Winnick in motion once again on first down. And give to Briggs again. Bounces off a couple. Akbar, the first guy to get hands on him, along with Issa. 
but he'll take it inside the 10 for another good gain. Well, you know, the Huskies have been flying outside for containment against Trunk Candidate. Arizona coaches, being smart guys like they are, are starting to come back inside and create, make sure the Huskies have people uh, out of position and you'll be able to pick up five, six yards in the middle. Arizona dominating the first quarter statistically in terms of total offense, but still looking for their first points of the quarter. Smith looks at Farms and just tucks it back inside. Nowhere to go, nowhere to hide. Triplet there to help secure him. Nice little bootleg there with Keith Smith hoping to fool the Huskies and get around the corner. He almost sold it except Darryl, excuse me, Jeremiah Farms, again like we talked about earlier in the, in the first quarter with him, Todd, staying in his responsibility area, not letting anybody get outside. That, those are the types of plays, Sonny, where an athlete like Smith, he loves a broken play and just to be able to create. They spread again, candidate stepping up as well. Husky showing a little bit of blitz and the right tackle jump, Savea offside. That'll back him up five more. No play, dead ball. Ball start, offense. Five yard penalty, still third down. Well, Savea has barely been getting a lot of accolades from the Arizona coaching staff. They feel he's really been a rock solid. Unfortunately, on that one, he was on the wrong snap count. Got a little, tried to get an early start. Wildcats can pick up a first down inside the three as you get a look at the senior from American Samoa by way of San Francisco Community College. Jenkins and Wade to the left this time. North got ISO to the right. He slants in. It's behind him. Nearest guy to the ball that time was Anthony Von Tour. Looked like Northcat broke off his route on that post a little quicker than Keith Smith wanted him to. And they just went on the same page on that play. And Huskies, good job by them to hold him to a field goal attempt. Now the young man who's been uh, meeting a need, you see the numbers for Von Tour there. Sean Keel, the walk-on, who nailed some field goals a week ago. This one a 30-yarder, and he remains perfect. Keel had 31 and 33 yard field goals a week ago against UCLA after Mark McDonald started the season by going one of 10. So Keel remains perfect. He hasn't hit anything long so far this year, but he gets the first points on the board for the Wildcats. The freshman from Littleton, Colorado makes it Arizona three, Washington nothing. Deliver it now. Welcome back to Tucson. The Wildcats leading it by a 3-0 score. Short kick pinning Arnold towards the sidelines, but he paints out one man and will take it out over the 30-yard line before he's dropped. Marcus Bell leading the tacklers along with Trevor Wild for Arizona. And a nice return there by Arnold, who was kind of uh, pinned to the boundary but made something of it, Sonny. Yeah, he did. He had a little bit of a lane there on the sideline. And he burst up there, but a good job by Mr. Tackle for Arizona, Marcus Bell, not only has a linebacker position, but he makes a lot of plays on special teams. Last year against the Huskies, he blocked a critical field goal. This guy can make a lot of plays from the defensive side. Tuiasa Sopo trotting out on the field to lead the Huskies for another series. Shaw. Big Horse is just trying to help push him out there a couple of yards. And there's Bell. Just talked about him leading the uh, assault wave for Arizona. Leading tackler for the Wildcats, fifth in the conference. And had that big game a year ago. Well, the way they play their defense, they force the, but there's the quarter, but Marcus Bell will make a lot of tackles in their scheme. Maurice Shaw hobbling off the field just a little bit. Arnold will come in for him. We'll keep our eyes on that as we come to the end of the first quarter. Arizona with the field goal has the advantage over Washington. Back in Tucson, the Wildcats leading the Huskies at the end of one quarter as Washington tries to figure out a way to get some yardage in its column. Arizona picking up the one field goal but had a couple of drives down deep into Washington territory and you see the numbers from the first half of play in sunny uh, 
21 total yards is not going to get it done too often. No, not today. You need to pick that up a little bit. Somebody needs to step up and make a big play. Wildcats fourth in the conference in defense, but the Huskies helping them to lower their numbers so far under pressure. Tui Sosopo throws, and you know when a catch is made like that, it's Chris Jurgens. <laughs> that's, that's textbook Jurgens right there. Yes, it is, and it gets that big frame of his up in the air about 6'3", and Chris Jurgens still probably uh, not 100% with that angle, but again, Arizona getting pressure and getting a lick on the quarterback, but when your receiver can make those kind of plays, Right there, you got Joe DeFoya, the leading sack man for Arizona, coming in and getting a hit on the quarterback. I swear when I watch Juergens do that, he's got a little bit of Raymond Berry in him, though, as Tuiasa Sopo keeps for the first time today. Picks up a couple yards. Just kind of gingerly going down. Mike Robertson on the stop for the Wildcats. Yeah, Alex Luna's been a little bit banged up for Arizona, so Robertson has come in in relief and in on a big play right there, keeping Tuiasa Sopo bottled up. But as the game wears on, I'm sure that the hip of Tuiasa Sopo will get looser and looser with the heat down here. And perhaps you can get that option rolling for the Huskies. Oh, he's just saving it for the fourth quarter. Under pressure to the outside. Looker with the catch. Stretches for the mark where he's a little bit short. But a nice grab, and you can see Marcus checking over the sidelines. He is hobbling a little bit. Yeah, you think about the option all the time with Tuiasa Sopo in that hip, but when you plant and throw the football and step toward the receiver it puts a watch his left hip right here you got to stretch it out to deliver the football and that puts a lot of pressure on that damaged area well, I tell you Tafoya is he's not real big so he's got a lot of quicks he's only about 255 pounds you saw in that play he's got it to get around the offensive line third and inches as they try to convert and they are going to be very, very close. It depends on what kind of spot they get as Shaw got stuffed. I thought they might try to sneak it that time. Let's see where they're going to give them the ball, though. Well, let's see what the Huskies do. They look like they might be about a half a yard short. Again, look at Tafoya standing. No one blocking. What that usually means with a backer and lineman standing there, you have too many defenders and not enough blockers, and that time it just didn't work out. You know, a lot of times, Todd, on short yardage, it helps to have a blocking back in there, a nice guy to lead you through there. On that particular play, you'd have a guy like 47 Condon in there, and you'd have been a big block. Sonny, they got a pretty good spot, though, did the Huskies, and if the chain is right, I think they've got the down. Yeah, touch the first one. Yep, there it is. That was more obvious than last week's one against Stanford, but <laughs> Jim Springer yeah. with the call, and yeah. they got a favorable plant. Shaw got his head down just enough to pick it up. Dick Tomey not real happy with that call. Well, you never know about Dick. At least this year, they didn't start out doing the bull and ring in the sidelines with his players. And uh, I think he mixed that idea this year. From the Arizona 45-yard line. Jurgens back in. Split to the right. A lot of time this time for Tuiasa Sopo. And another catch by Jurgens right at the marker. You know, this is the nicest rhythm Marcus has been in the early phase of a game for a while. Well, you know, it's uh, it's really is when he didn't practice all week, but he's throwing to a guy he's used to, but he's laying it out there real nice. He's not trying to overthrow the football, which sometimes I feel he does when he's healthy. So maybe this little hip injury is just helping him settle down a little bit. But again, you've got Jurgens going against Leland Gales, who they say is 5'10", but I don't think he is look, quite. Look, your name's on TV. Oh, my gosh. How about that? Little action in the middle that time. Tuiasa Sopo with a couple of big games against Cal and Stanford the last couple weeks. And getting Washington some offense Brian via the pass. The snap. Offside, defense. Pick up five, five penalty. There. Still first down. Yeah, J.J. Jopru comes in 97. And you see right here, he's going to get a little quick start. Perhaps that's the way he got two sacks last week against UCLA, Todd, huh? Getting a little early jump. <laughs> nice job by Ben just to, to hold his ground. Sonny, a great place here maybe on first and five to uh, stretch it out a little bit. Always a good opportunity, and uh, Huskies normally would not do that. Well, Marcus just drew him off again, I think, as he was given to Shaw. That was Cadence. You could hear it that time. Yeah. He pulled him off well. 
That's what's nice about this stadium with the high on the other side. You're open and you can hear just about everything. Well, the one linesman's pointing towards the Huskies. I thought he drew them off pretty well. Prior to the snap, dead ball, offside, contact, yep. defense. First down, Washington via the penalty. Here's again some of the numbers for total offense in Pac-10 history, the fourth greatest game of all time. You see Smith also on the list, but a 4 OT game. But again, as we said, Chui Asasopo, the first to do it with the combination of 300 pass, 200 rush. Yeah, that's a, just a great performance and a lot of good names on that list. And I'm sure the Husky coaches like to see another performance like that. Yeah, but most of the rest of the ones on that list did it by chucking most of the time. You're right. And we can't get this one underway now. Wildcats had kind of spread the gap on the defense a little bit that time, and we'll see which way this one goes. The last two have been Washington's favor, so. Uh, Prior the to the snap, timeout, Arizona, number ah, two. So now both teams have burned two timeouts. And the Wildcats making the call, so pick up the flag. Timeout taken by Arizona. The Huskies just outside the red zone looking to get their first points of the game. And a good look at Arizona Stadium on a beautiful sunny afternoon in Tucson, Arizona. The Washington Huskies taking on the Arizona Wildcats. Homecoming in Tucson. I'm Todd Pickett along with Sonny Six Killer and we welcome you back. Washington with its first really impressive drive on offense this afternoon. Has the ball at the Arizona 24 yard line after getting a couple of penalties to establish its last first down. And Sonny, the uh, passing of Marcus Tuiasasopo has been the key to this drive. It really has, and he's been hooking up with his favorite receiver so far this year, Chris Jurgens, who also is coming off a little injury bug, but seems like they're on the same page this afternoon. And I tell you, you can't ask for a better place to run nice out-timed routes because this is a nice turf, that Bermuda grass, the weather's nice, it's hot, beautiful day. The track is fast. Conniff and Shaw in the backfield as we get back to action. Shaw through the right side. One arm tackled away maybe from going all the way. He got held up just enough that time by J.J. Jopru. Nice Bell quick, assisting on the tackle. Nice quick hitter, Todd, that time. And uh, we saw Maurice Shaw go off the field briefly on the last time, but last series. But here he's back, and you see the blocking. Ben, Chad Ward, everyone up front getting their guy. And, that's what you like to see on a first down run. It's a nice solid six yards. Great job by the line that time. And the second and short, you see the drive now of 50 yards. After that punt return by Arnold, rather the kick return. Shaw just outside the 10 yard line and a first down for Washington. Good check off it appeared that time from Tuiasa Sopo. Saw something on the line of scrimmage. The play he had called was not going to work. And hands off to old reliable here, Mo Shaw, 32. You can see Jeremy Stevens downfield getting a pretty good block down there with Mr. Marcus Bell, number 40. And that's a good play. You draw, do the draw. Your tight end's got to get down and occupy the middle line. Back. That was some really effective zone blocking look on both sides of the line. There were several holes that time. Nice to have a choice. Shaw back in there again on this first down. Tried to stuff it up the left side. He'll get three or four before he's pushed back. Greg Payne Jr. coming up from the secondary to assist. Yeah, it looks pretty impressive for Arizona to do the big beehive tackle at the end and pursue it. But by that time, Mo Shaw had already picked up four yards. And the lineman up front, you got to give him credit. Elliot Silvers and Kyle Ben, Dominic Gaste. And yeah, this is one of those, uh, looks like the second half drives, the way they've been moving them off the ball. You see the Huskies very efficient, 21 scores in 25 opportunities in the red zone, and a great 6-1 to one touchdown to field goal ratio as well. Conniff back in again as the up back for Shaw. Harris in motion. Chewy floating this one deep for Stevens. Nearly made the grab. He had to wait a little long, but almost made a great catch in the back of the end zone before getting shoved away. Coast of Wildcats there. Antonio Pierce was there on one stop. Leland Gale's also there to help, and that young man nearly made a beautiful catch. Yeah, he was open a little bit earlier than that, but you saw him set himself up. 
to make the big high rebounding catch and uh, you know six seven and, and nearly pulled it off. Looked like that one held just a little bit longer in the air than they would have liked that time. Yeah, you're right and he also was running out of territory back there. He he knew where he was and consequently couldn't make the grab but nice effort. Well guess what? Timeout. Timeout taken by Washington. If you're going to use it might as well take it when you're down <laughs> knocking on the door. So the Huskies out of timeouts now for the remainder of the first half. The most impressive part about that last play Todd is the fact that Tuiasa Sopo rolling out to his right really did so like there was no pain and, and nothing in his uh, hip bothering him. The throw was off a little bit but that's just because they ran out of room. Yeah but the nice thing there too for Rick Neuheisel he puts the ball where only one guy could get his hands on it even though Stevens wasn't able to pull it down. By the way I want to finish up that great trivia question of ours the only other coach to be a career victory leader at two separate schools Tommy Bear Bryant George Welch, the other Virginia and Navy. Wow. There we, well, you had to finish it. We started it. Huskies trying to come up with a victory. By the way, there's an Arizona man down on the field. We'll tell you about that in a second. But Marcus Tuiasa Sopo back leading this team again. And he says, don't expect any letdown from the Huskies after last week's win. Uh, we, we understand that we, there's no really easy game. And each game, each, the next game is bigger than the one before. And, uh, you know, it's just as long as we just worry about us and what we can do and what we can control, uh, I don't think we'll have a letdown. Uh, we had we've had we had a letdown once, and we don't want to do that again. Tuiasa Sopo over on the sidelines talking. It was Idris Haroon who was down on the field for Arizona. You know that during the break there, Todd, I was watching him and watching some of the other Arizona players, and they just appear like they might be a little gassed on this drive and the Huskies really seem like they're kind of in tune here on the same page but uh, you know nine of the eleven were had their helmets off gasping for air. Yeah Haroon looked as though he needed to be revived literally I mean he was down on all fours they were dumping water on him I thought he might have gone down and gotten dinged a little bit. Washington can pick up a first down inside the one that you see how effective this drive has been compared to the rest of the game for the Huskies. Shaw is the running back. Slant pattern open and dropped a little behind Harris perhaps, but a catchable ball. Leland Gales on the coverage for Arizona. We saw Very a little bit of the frustration from Tuiasa Sopo after that one. May, may have been able to deliver the ball just a little bit sooner. See him check off. He looked it off, came back, but definitely a catchable ball. You said maybe a little behind him. When you hit the numbers, you should catch the football. Anderson on to attempt a 25-yard field goal. Militich the holder. This to tie the game. And the freshman nails it. 3-3 our score as Anderson picks up his ninth field goal in 12 attempts this season. And Washington has leveled against Arizona. Two field goals, all the scoring so far in the desert. Part of the crowd at Arizona Stadium. She's got her Wildcat paw on there. As the U of A and the U of Dub are even at 3-3 and Anderson gets set to kick off. A little bit lower in a line drive this time. It will pin back in the corner, bobbled there by Larry Crew. And the Huskies stay home and drop him after a short run back. Curtis Williams leading the tacklers that time. Uh, the freshman didn't particularly like that boot, but it was effective. I'll tell you this year how many times we've set Curtis Williams in on the tackle on kickoff special teams. On the right corner of that end zone area. That's not a shade of Arizona blue. That's purple. That's Husky fans down in that end zone. <laughs> I must have asked 100 people if they had their sunscreen. Did you do that whole lecture? Oh, you, the whole sunscreen bit? Oh, yeah. All right. Just check it. Sonny's advice to the Husky fans of 99. No sunscreen. Smith throwing, hung up a long way. Intercepted. Yep, there was a juggle for it, but it is grabbed by Jermaine Smith. Flag down on the play in the backfield. It should go against Arizona. Sonny, that one held up a long time, too, and Smith was able to get under it. Well, I tell you, that was a, not a very good throw by Keith Smith, not only because it was picked off, but before he threw the ball, watch the cut. Watch Jermaine Smith, number one. His receiver shortens up Northcutt. Now, Northcutt's going to do that. Then you look at the inside. 
Jermaine Smith has peripheral vision. He sees where the other receiver's coming. Bad throw by Key Smith. Did Smith throw a little late and allow Jermaine to come back or not? Misread it. And yep. I just didn't like the scheme right there. If you have a guy town like Dennis Northcutt, why run him down five yards and have him turn around and stand there? You see the numbers for Jermaine Smith. His return to the secondary has been another one of the keys, allowing Washington to be a lot more stronger, a lot aggressive back there. Came back against Cal, injured, and played that fourth quarter. Very big part, very big leadership part for that defense. Kept hobbling around the field, just trying to shake off that ankle, but he stayed in. He's been a key ever since. See if Washington can profit from the turnover. They're looking to do it quickly. Tuiasa Soko will scramble away. Still staying home instead of running. Finds Harris inside the five. Touchdown, Washington. Marcus might have run that some weeks. He stayed home this time, and it paid off. Well, he thought about running, but I'll tell you right there, his hip may be hurting, but the courageous young man, again, you see him kind of hobbling back off. But what a great job by Gerald Harris as well to get open for the throw. They're all watching the replay on the big screen <laughs> as Harris makes his fourth touchdown catch of the year. Anderson on to attempt the extra point. And Washington capitalizes with one big play immediately after the turnover. Tuiasa Sopo's 11th touchdown pass of the year going to Harris and the Huskies go up by seven. Washington jumps out in front. Rick Neuheisel with a little encouragement there for Harris after his touchdown reception. The junior from Kent Meridian calling in his fourth grab of the year. They know he came back to help out his quarterback on that play as well. Anderson set to kick once again. This one much truer and deep. Wildcats will down it there. They'll start at the 20. Let's watch the play. Right here, Tui was looking to the right to go to Chris Jurgens in the corner. He was covered, but look at that quick reaction to get outside. He sees Gerald Harris, who had broken out to the outside to his left. Good job by Gerald Harris to come back after the drop touchdown reception to come back with a good big play. So he's pretty much a decoy in this play until Tui Asasopo breaks out of the pocket to his left. Then he becomes the number one receiver. Good avoid right there and then dives into the end zone. Good comeback play by Gerald Harris. Big play right there. He just heads up football to get the touchdown for Washington. Smith trying to run a little option. He'll get hauled down by Isa. Five yard loss there and the big man came storming through. Keith Smith may not get back up. If he does, it's very slow. Take a look at Tuyasa Sopo on the sidelines, but should be looking at Jabari Issa right here, 95 on the left side, just blows by his blocker. And I'm not quite sure what that play was. It's kind of like a sprint out option of some sort. And all three of the front guys had gotten through the interference. Triplett and Mulatawa Paley were also there. North cut split wide to the bottom. Jenkins in once again. Under pressure, looked like a hold in the backfield. Yep, they'll finally flag it. Smith will just throw that one away. They just tackled the defender that time. And Washington, Sonny, where's all this upfield pressure coming from all of a sudden? Well, I tell you, they have worked really hard. And a, a couple games ago, guys like Triplett, Mui Tao Pele, Jabari Issa finally getting some really room to roam. And this young man right there, Muntau Pele, has come on to really solidify it right inside the guard gaps over the center. Holding offense. Penalty is declined. Third down. So they'll make it third and 15 rather than the second and be about 22-23. Watch right here. <laughs> I, I don't know. That's a tough one to really to really d distinguish right there is Bruce Wiggins, the center, made probably the first tackle of the year yeah. <laughs> for him on Molotawa Pele. And he's a very fine player for Arizona. North got isolated to the bottom of the screen. Smith looking long, come back, and it's behind Ortiz Jenkins. Defender had lost his footing, but Smith's pass was way behind Jenkins that time. Well, there's an up, you know, Todd, one thing 
Ortiz T. Jenkins, great athlete. There's no question about that. Everybody saw the leap from last year. Very talented quarterback running and throwing, but he is really not a true wide receiver. Running that route and being on the same page with your quarterback. Jarzinka back in punt return once again. A little pressure by Washington. Nice high kick. Jarzinka trying to run it again. He'll get dropped for about a three or four yard loss. Guess who's there? Bell leading the tacklers once again. But the Huskies in pretty good field position and with a 10-3 lead over the Arizona Wildcats. As the offense comes back out onto the field, don't forget Northwest Sports tonight. Get the latest on your local teams, the Cougars, Beavers, Huskies, and Ducks. And of course, a complete update on the Sonics and the Blazers. Whatever goes on around the Northwest, from the preps to the pros, you can find it on Northwest Sports tonight, weeknights at 7 on Fox Sports Net. Forty-nine yard punt for the Wildcats that time as Jarzinka went backwards just a little bit. But a good looking punt by Palak. Marcus Tuiasasopo with the quick strike the last time and you know it's just like a week ago Sonny we know that he's banged up and bruised but he continues to play well and I got bad news for you Six. He's just slid past, past you. This is for single season offense and consider Marcus needs just a little over 200 yards today to become the all-time single season offensive leader. We still got a couple weeks to go after that. Well, I hope he surpasses that by a long uh, shot. Today. Time, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it couldn't happen to a nicer guy and there's some great names on there starting with Kerry Conf and uh, just a great bunch of guys on that list. That's the point where you're supposed to go. Well, of course, we didn't throw the ball as much back then <laughs> as they do today. Uh, it's nah, it's been a super season for uh, Marcus and just a phenomenal game a week ago. I, I don't think you or I have ever seen anything like that from a college quarterback, a performance like that. No, and it's such great balance, and I like the fact that giving the game ball by his teammates for his performance and then turning around and giving it back to his offensive lineman it just tells you what kind of human being and player this guy is. It's been fun watching this team continue to gel over the last three or four weeks, and, and this is a team that's been resilient and Continue to bounce back after what some thought was a shaky start. And look at that. Five for nine to start out the game here. And a lot of that coming on that last drive. Yes, it was. And a lot of those were completed to Chris Jurgens. Plus the touchdown pass to Harris. And the Huskies lead it by seven. They'll give to Shaw. They'll get a couple that time to Foya, the first guy to get hands on him, along with some help from Alex Luna. Now, I know it's early in the ballgame, Todd, but the score 10 to three. Let's take it, keep our eye on the two lines of these teams. You got the offense versus defense and see who steps it up a little bit right now in the trenches. We also, Sonny, have the two teams who lead the conference in terms of time of possession. So they both like to kind of grind it out here and that'll be something to watch as the game goes along. Who wins that war of the clock? Marcus rolling out, facing a man, throws in a double coverage grab by Looker. He was out in front of the pack, got underneath that one, first down at the Arizona 35. Absolutely a great throw with pressure on him. Tuyasa Sopo having to get away from Deshaun Polk. But gee, many Dane Looker, what a grab. Got the tips on it. Got those basketball hands on it. Let's take another look. Look at the pressure. Look at the hit. Could have been a little late right there. You got a helmet to helmet on Tuyasa Sopo. But that grab right there, Dane Looker's going to be proud of that catch. Could have been a flagging now. I was going to say if we keep up, we're going to start calling him Balboa. He keeps looking over to the side and pulling himself up off the deck. Shaw, just a couple that time as the Wildcats rallied to the ball in a hurry. Deshaun Polk, Marcus Bell on the stop. Well, the two leading tacklers for Arizona filled that hole quickly. Looked like Maurice Shaw had a little bit of room to run out there, but number 40, Marcus Bell, 21 tackles. That's a lot of tackles in a ball game. He was named the Pac-10 Defensive Player of the Week for that performance a year ago. Huskies now taking the advantage in total offense over the Wildcats. And it's been really Washington's football for much of this second quarter. 
Down the line. Paul Arnold. Good screen block by Looker, but Bell got out there in a hurry to make the stop. Well, you've got to do a few of these plays. I know you and I were talking before the ball game that just a little bit of that option will keep them honest on defense and then throw the ball downfield, come back with a little bit of that dive play with your big running back, and keep them guessing a little bit. you got to mix it up. They've got this Wildcat defense on their heels right now. Yeah, they're doing a little substitution on the D-line. Wildcats have also lost uh, Keone Frazier, one of their starting defensive tackles. He's out with an ankle injury the rest of the way. The slant grab by Jurgens, first down, 21-yard line, and he beat Leland Gales again. They've been picking on that cornerback. Well, you know, they, Arizona, last year and the last three years prior to that, they had a fellow named Chris McAllister playing cornerback that they relied on to make big plays. Leland Gales, good ball player, is not a Chris McAllister. Looked like Antonio Pierce, the backer, kind of took a bad route in coverage that time as well. Jurgens over on the sideline having another big afternoon. Timeout, timeout taken Arizona. by Arizona. The final timeout. Well, folks, we can't take any more timeouts <laughs> from either team. We're midway through the second quarter. <laughs> you know, there's a look at J.K. Scott, and if I may for a moment just bring him up because this young man took a lot of snaps this week to prepare this team for this game, Todd. And even though he didn't start, he has helped this offense. An unsung hero thus far. He's also signaling the plays into Tui. The Huskies trying to add to their lead. Yes, we even bring you Tuba Cam on Fox <laughs> Sports Net. Golden visions in the desert. Well, there's a lot of them down here. Huskies breaking the line with another first down. Look at those numbers this quarter in terms of total offense. Wildcats going nowhere, and the Huskies getting untracked, and they do more with Shaw. You know, the, you talk to a lineman, they love to do run blocking, and these guys are starting to open holes, as we said, much like that old fourth quarter lineman's advantage. Right side of the line doing a great job there, Ward leading the way. Well, if you come in throwing the football with a passing attack against Arizona, they're going to use their quickness on you and get to the quarterback. Last week, UCLA. They got after the quarterback nine times in sacks, which resulted in, what, a minus 31 yards rushing. Today, the offensive line for the Huskies so far is handling them pretty good. Four more yards for Shaw. He has 31 on 11 carries thus far. Conniff kind of tripped over the pile that time. But falling forward, as he always does. Haroon leading the Wildcat defense on that one. There's another workhorse. Pat Conniff, an unsung hero. A lot of blocking, an occasional carry, a, receive, a reception rather, every once in a while, but nobody works harder play after play. Four wideouts this time for Washington. They need to get inside the Arizona 11 yard line. Shaw the single back. Wildcats stunning. They were offside again. Nothing Marcus likes better than the whistles going and stopping those blue shirts from <laughs> blowing through the line. And if it is on Arizona, which it appeared to be, it would be another first down via the penalty for Washington. Prior to the snap, dead ball, ball start, Ooh. offense. High guard penalty. Husky coaches are asking who. And I didn't see anybody go that time, but they must have seen a flex somewhere. Well, that's a tough call. I'm not quite sure which official did it, but hey, if they called it. Well, it's a mystery, so they'll take it. Somebody must have rolled or flexed or done something to draw them off that time, so they'll march it back out to the 20. That's right, gives you a little bit more field to work with against his defense anyway. Well, that's right. I feel right now you've got an opportunity to go post corner or something against Leland Gales. They've been picking on this afternoon. Time for Tuiasa Soko looking for Harris. End zone dives. No. Gales was the man on the coverage, but Harris could not keep it inbounds. Boy, that was close. And, you know, tough, long throw across the field that time, Sonny, and good zip on the ball again for Marcus. Yeah, he threw that ball about 40 yards, 45 yards across the field, and 
Very close call over there by the official, but he was right in position to make it. And I had a feeling that uh, that was going to be the play, but you see Gerald Harris thinking he had a score. Yeah, I think he just looked up at the replay screen as well. So Anderson will come on to attempt his second field goal. Militich the holder. This one will be from 38 yards. Off to right hash. And got it. Anderson remains perfect inside 40 yards this year. He gets his second in this game and stretches it to a 10-point advantage for Washington. A little over five to go in the first half. This quarter has belonged to the Huskies. Ball in the air from Anderson. This one's going to be brought back by Larry Kroon. Kelly meets him, takes it down about the 25-yard line. Smith trying to get things untracked for the Wildcats and more college football comes your way next Saturday. College football Saturday featuring the Cincinnati Bearcats against East Carolina, top 20 team, then a rivalry Texas against Texas Tech and our Pac-10 showdown. These same Wildcats taking on Dennis Erickson and the Beavers who have high hopes for the remainder of the season. It all comes your way starting at 12.30 here on Fox Sports Net. The Wildcats with a bit of a long field, a little over five minutes to go, and Kennedy cuts it back this time, found the hole, and look out, when he gets it into high gear, he could go all the way. Trump Candidate specializes in the long runs, and he just got an Arizona touchdown, 74 yards. Well, they stayed true until that point, Sonny, but he was able to cut it back. You're right, he's had, I don't know how many 100-yard games or how many long touchdown runs, but it's all mainly on cutbacks. And that time the Husky defense was in position to cut him off on the toss sweep, and he does a great job that he's done in his career. Cut back against the flow, and no one's there, and he outruns everybody. And just like that, Arizona's back in the ballgame. Here goes Candidate again. Look at the flow right there. Everyone's trying to cut him off. Daryl Daniels, you see him get cut off, and Trunk Kennedy is off to the races, and once he gets out there, it's tough to catch the young man. Right there, he cuts back, and you watch Daryl Daniels on the left. Marcus McFadden had a hand on 24. Daryl Daniels, who was coming up to try and make a play, but couldn't get there, and Trunk Kennedy goes all the way. Yeah, the list of his long touchdown runs is just phenomenal. As he's posted almost a couple dozen of 35-plus yard runs. And once you get him a step or so, there you see he was nowhere statistically until that run. And then he makes the numbers look great with one long one. That was his, what, 13th TD over 45 yards. Yeah, his, average, his average on his scoring touchdown runs is in the 40s, which is phenomenal and they said it's it's been lowered because he's been the short yardage guy as well this season which normally he hasn't been mark mcdonald set to kick off for the wildcats arnold having to watch this one sail over his head and through the end zone and the huskies will start at the 20. it's been a rough season for that young man mcdonald was the kicker who was missing field goals all over everywhere and he'd like to go out on this senior day with a, a little bit of glory anyway. Well, the coach is real happy uh, on the Arizona sideline. A little breeze behind him, able to knock it out of the end zone after a big scoring touchdown like that. And the fans really went into this ball game. Huskies up by 10 points, one big long run, and now they got their signs up. They're back into this football game, and then they get a big kickoff with no return. As you said, really, the, the Wildcat defense was gasping for air and not going anywhere. and. One play was all it took right then for the Wildcats. We'll see how the pendulum swings here for the remainder of the half. Wildcats with some stunts up front. Marcus well protected, then it finally breaks down, stays on his feet, puts this one up for grabs a little bit, but throws it wide. Austin was the closest man to it, and he's living dangerously, but he's staying away from the guys in blue so far. Yeah, it's amazing that he could have the movement in his legs and his hips to get away from the rush coming from Arizona. 
a long time to get rid of the football, though, Todd. He was looking downfield, no one open, and that allows your defense with their quickness to get back in there and put pressure on him. Well, boy, how he got out of there, I will not know, but did the smart thing here, threw it towards the receiver, but not catchable by anyone. Avoided Jopru that time. Wildcat fans continue to holler. Quick out, Jergens stretches. He'll be short of the first down out at about the 28-yard line. Greg Payne Jr. on the coverage that time. Oh, that's Hooker, excuse me. Good out by Dane Looker against Greg Payne, the strong safety. Got in position on him and a nice throw that time by Tuiasa Soka. Great possession catch and gives Washington a third and short that time as Looker hauled that one in. Connick and Shaw in the backfield. Sprinting towards the outside this time as he floats. Shaw going to be bouncing off one tackler. And he'll pick up the first down with that second effort. They read it, they gambled, got to the gaps. But Mo Shaw's leg drive makes a big first down. Well, that's why you tell your running backs at the first contact, do not quit those legs, not quit running. You know, keep those legs moving. And right there you saw from Mo Shaw, a perfect example of that. And also I liked on this play they have Conifin as the lead blocker, kind of getting in the way, but also helping Mo Shaw to get rid of Antonio Pierce. That's right. The hole collapsed, but Conniff made it possible for Shaw to really stay on his feet and keep going. Shaw once again picks up positive yardage coming up from the secondary, Rafael Jones on the tackle. Those three and four yard chunks just keep advancing the guys in the white shirts. Also I love running clock. <laughs> I love downfield. Dominic Dastry was down there on Marcus Bell, 10 yards from where the ball ended up, and that was a nice little uh, job by the Husky offensive lineman. That'll help him grade out a little bit more. There, a look at Rafael Jones. Uh, we mentioned a guy who got himself in the doghouse a little bit, uh, if the Wildcats can have a doghouse, <laughs> with his coach, Dick Tomey. Didn't show up for a practice, an early morning practice, and uh, has had to play himself back into the lineup a little bit. Shaw carrying through the middle. Bell meets him, but not until he gets close to first down yardage again and should have enough for it out at about the 45-yard line. Good little smash mouth football going on right now from the Husky front. See the nice deep handoff, get it to him as soon as you can so he has room to run with the football. Marcus Bell on, in on the tackle, but not after until he picks up the first down. And Shaw has really stepped into the gap with uh, Clement and Hurst being dinged up a little bit and really in large part unavailable. Mo Shaw has come to the fore for Washington here over the last three weeks. He really has, he's uh, just stepped it up and. The more playing, he's been out, he was out so long. You see him with 48 yards there, Todd, but it takes a, a little bit of time to get back in your rhythm and back in your game. Husky's having a scramble here, the play clock at two. Marcus is not gonna get that off. Well, they're gonna give it to him. Throws to the outside. Harris really had to adjust after some contact, and he made a nice job of pulling it in. Huskies are very lucky on that play, Todd, because you and I both looked up clock was on zero yeah and they got away with it Harris really tied up that time with Kelvin Hunter and hadn't gotten his balance back when he made the cut still was able to pull it in excellent job by Gerald Harris to get that catch go up high with his hands and make the grab but again you know Tuyasa Sopo has been right on on most of these out routes this afternoon yeah, he's looking as crisp as he has in a first half all season long First down right at the Arizona 40. Draw for Shaw. Bouncing off of guys again. He'll fall forward for four more. Rafael Jones finally wrapping him up with the help of two or three teammates. We've said it before, you, you think he's got a huge game. The numbers are little, but the effort is tremendous from Shaw. Oh, it is. Right there, you see almost the Kyle Ben trying to do a little trip move there. Fortunately, he didn't get it done because it would have been a penalty. Conniff also coming in to help block down that time and open the hole. As they got Deshaun Polk out of the way. Shaw on the wing this time. In the spread. Pressure gets away, now goes down. Two 
Tui Asasoko finally couldn't get away from Mike Robertson. He just kind of stepped inside the lead blocking that time. Yeah, he did. Good job by Arizona that time. And Tui Asasoko, I thought it had a receiver open. It looked like Todd Elstrom in the flat. But right there, because of that zipping inside by Arizona, he couldn't get the pass off and couldn't keep his footing. One thing I'll say about this Bermuda grass is it's very nice turf, it's nice stuff, it's on a golf course, but you do lose your footing quite easily on it. Third and 14, and also you see the Huskies doing very well from a percentage standpoint on third down so far today. No timeouts remaining, so they've got to be aware of the change, the sideline and everything else if they want to get some more points before the break. It's picked up well again by the front line. Marcus trying to scramble for this one. It's a foot race. He'll get to the first down before Bell wraps him up. First down for Washington. Closing seconds of the first half. We'll have more action from Tucson right after this. Back in Tucson, the Huskies now over 200 yards of total offense after their slow start. The freshman takes it into the end zone for Paul Arnold, his first rushing touchdown as a Husky. Washington has a man down on the field. No, it's uh, Bell, actually, the Arizona linebacker who picks himself back up. Good second effort by Arnold as he refuses to go down unsportsmanlike against Washington. Touchdown, counts. Dead ball, unsportsmanlike demonstration, offensive team. Penalty on the extra Boy, point. I didn't see much of one. You know, here's a freshman kid scoring a nice run in a big, big game. Destiny in, in its path, and, and they get a call like that. I, I don't know about that stuff, Todd, but watch this downfield. Good job of stringing it out by there by two. Now watch Pat, Pat Connor, 47. Didn't get a look at it from that spot. But Gerald Harris as well. But Pat Conniff took out Marcus Bell, That's number 40, for That's Arizona. Demonstration. Nope. You saw a little bit of celebration from Looker. Yards. I don't know where Touchdown. else the celebrating was from. It didn't flag Marcus. He was way back upfield. Bell now finally being helped off the field. And, well, if they're going to assess it on this, it'll be just a field goal attempt for Anderson. And uh, I don't think the Huskies will be too perturbed with that unless it doesn't go through the uprights. So this will be about 36 yards out now. Militic counting heads. Arizona sprinting a player on the field late. And blocked. Can be run back. Now it might make a difference. A nine point lead instead of a 10 and they look to be a little out of sync on that one. They weren't ready for that at all. And Mr. Blocker, Peter Hansen, 14 for Arizona. The stork. Comes through with a big, big play for Arizona. Paul Arnold had the 100-yard kickoff return earlier in the year. Now has his first rushing touchdown at the University of Washington. Closes out another big drive for the Huskies. That scramble by Tui Asasopo on the third down kept the drive alive. No question. Outrunning Marcus Pope to pick up the first down and then Pope himself on the next play on Paul Arnold's touchdown run. Blocked by Pat Conniff and two plays in a row, knocked back. Anderson getting set to kick off. Wildcat run back team, return team now coming out onto the field. Keep our eyes out for Bell in the second half as well. He was down for a long time before he finally picked himself up and went off the field. Yeah, sorry, Todd, I meant Bell. I, there must be a Marcus Pope out there somewhere. He's, Bell is sitting <laughs> over on the bench on the far sidelines, but appears to be okay as Anderson gets set to kick off. Wildcats flip flop return, man. This one's gone deep, and it's not going to come out. Prim took a look at that and said that was enough. And we'll see what the Wildcats do with 39 seconds remaining here in the first half. The youngster from Kennedy High, one of the talked about recruits nationally, not just for the Husky program, and he's got his first rushing touchdown. Well, I kind of look for uh, 
Key Smith at 39 yards to pick up a couple big plays here. He's got Ortiz Jenkins in there as well at wide receiver. You stop and think about it, Sonny. If it weren't for that long run of candidate, the Wildcats have done nothing in this second quarter of play. That's absolutely right. Trying to find someone incomplete through the hands of Jenkins as he'd cut to the inside. That one long run, that one instant, as it happens so often in sports, one team dominating, continuing to do well, and it, one brief flash can undo some of it, but the Huskies bounce right back with that touchdown drive. Or look again at Jenkins. He's at the top of your screen on second down. Huskies just trying to play a little bit of prevent right now. Smith trying to step up, throws a wobbler, picked off. Akbar, second interception of the half. He has it at about the 35-yard line. The Huskies don't have any timeouts, but they still throw a couple good sideline routes and get Anderson within range. And that's the second pass this afternoon in this first half that Keith Smith has just thrown it up there for someone else to pick it off. First interception of the year for Akbar, the 12th for the Husky defense. Yes, he had a twin set on that side. Northcutt just settling in the middle, but it looked like he was going downfield to Wade and Akbar right in perfect position for the underthrow, way underthrown football. And Northcutt already over a thousand yards receiving this season and 64 catches. Pretty quiet this has afternoon. Has been very quiet. He averages over seven catches a game and they have not gone to him much. All right, 23 seconds remaining. Do you go for broke here on one play or do you try to get down and get three more on the board? Let's I see. They're going sideline, too tall that time for Jurgens, and that's really about the first bad ball that Marcus Tuiasasopo has thrown in the opening 30 minutes. Well, in the shotgun, you know, you've really got to make sure your feet are set and whip those feet around so you've got them going in the right direction. See the bandage around the leg of Chris Jurgens as well as he takes the position back on the sidelines once again. Elstrom will come in for him. Both backs in a protective blocking situation there for Marcus Tuiasasopo and a whistle away again. You have a little quick start. West call getting some playing time this afternoon for this afternoon for Kurt Cannell, who's out. Trying to get a little quick start over there. Good ball. Ball start. Offense. Five yard penalty. Some Still second quick, down. Some call it false, unfortunately. <laughs> Springer's version counts for five yards. Well, usually if uh, in this kind of situation, if somebody's going to jump, it's usually the weak tackle. Trying to get a little advantage on that outside rusher. Weak being a relative term. When I'm not going to call West sides. weak, but uh, <laughs> weak side. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you, you go tell somebody 6'7", 298 that he's the weak tackle. <laughs> Looker and Jurgens both back in. Husky fans start to yell back and forth with go Huskies. Wildcats again trying to show some blitz. Lots of time, and Marcus will try to bust this one upfield and get dropped. Jopru, the first man to him. And if you're the Wildcats, you stay on top of him and don't let him get another snap off. See if he's going to be able to ground it at all. Two, one. Now they're going to have to go for broke here. He tried to ground it, but he ran out of time. And that'll end the first half of play. So the Huskies unable to capitalize on the second interception, but a great second quarter. Marcus Tuiasasopo leading his troops to the lead at the intermission. Washington leads it 19-10. Just about ready to start the second half at Arizona Stadium in Tucson. The Washington Huskies with a big second quarter lead the Wildcats 19 to 10 at the intermission as the teams return to the field and Sonny Six Killer what a big second quarter it was for Washington. Boy the first quarter we're going where's the yards where's the yards second quarter the offense really got it rolling the offensive line did a fantastic job and some kid wearing number 11 really came through in that second quarter. And as we take a look at the first half highlights the defense came through as well a pair of interceptions for Washington in the first half this one setting up a touchdown scoring drive. Yeah not a real good throw by the quarterback from Arizona Keith Smith that time, a nice pick by Washington. And Gerald Harris coming back here after the drop touchdown pass to make a touchdown on that reception. And here, Arizona looked like they're dead. But Trung Candidate, as he has always done, does the cutback move, outraces all the Huskies to the end zone to get Arizona back in the ball game. 
And then the freshman, Paul Arnold, Kennedy High School. Here he comes on the sideline on the option pitch. Great blocking up front. Tuya Sosopo with the pitch and Paul Arnold with the touchdown. And we take a look at the first half action there and a joyful Marcus Tuiasa Sopo. We'll share some of the numbers from you from the first half after our kickoff. The Huskies deferring that coin toss and they will receive to get the second half underway. And no sign of Lucy pulling the ball away from Charlie Brown there, but it rolls off the tee and McDonald will have to go back and grab it once again. Arnold and Jarzinka back deep for Washington. As we mentioned, the breeze has been swirling around the stadium different directions and just enough that time to knock the ball off the precarious perch on its tee and now McDonald high into the wide side toward Arnold. From the three. Nice boundary kick by McDonald, and he's knocked down right at the 20-yard line. Lance Briggs with the tackle for Arizona as we turn to our first half numbers. And with that outstanding second quarter, Washington going over 200 yards of offense in the half. Arizona with not much except for that long run by Candidate. That's nearly half their total for the first half of play. And Arizona with those two big turnovers and the time of possession tied. Seven minutes, advantage to the UW. Shaw grinding it out. Candidate got 74 of the 83 on just one run. Yeah, you kind of like that five yard carry for nine yards on the other runs. Tuya hey! Sosopo looking to throw first down. Shaw incomplete. And hiding back there was Haroon. He nearly was able to step in on that one in a case there of maybe Marcus not spotting him again. Yeah, I thought that Marcus was first looking towards Dane Looker in the middle of the field. Elects to go outside to Mo Shaw, but Haroon did a nice job of getting out in coverage. During the first half, you and I talked about it during a break. This is maybe the nicest job that Marcus has done of looking away from receivers and then coming back. Yes, we saw it earlier on the drop pass, unfortunately, by Harris, but he did look away, came back to the receiver, which is uh, just another step for the young quarterback. Caught up the single running back as they put four in the pattern. Toyasa Sopo keeping Bell there to meet him after about a yard. So Bell uh, apparently none the worse for wear, and Marcus uh, got himself recharged during halftime. Well, he also got himself recharged on that because Bell was in position to really put a big lick on him, and he did. Drove him to the turf very hard. See Wayne Moses, the running back coach, signaling some plays in there. So a third and long situation in a place where the Huskies don't want to really put it up for grabs against this Arizona defense. Jurgens and Looker coming out to the bottom of the screen. Harris up to the top. They pick up the stunt. Jurgens, he's going to be a little short of the first down, though, with that dive. They'll spot him about a half yard short. He needed to get right to the 30. And he's hobbling a little bit as he gets up. Well, he's got that tender ankle, but a nice grab. They are going to call it fourth down without a measurement here. Just not quite able to stretch out there before his knee was on the turf. Now they had the punt team collected, hesitated. Now they send him on. We get another look at the sophomore from Olympia, just inches short. Relatively quiet first half for Ryan Fleming. And Northcutt back set to return once again. So statistically from the 29 yard line with his punt. A low roller. Northcutt's gonna take advantage of the bounce, but he won't get anywhere. Good downfield coverage that time for Washington. Elstrom there, Madavi there, Williams also there. Wildcats will have the ball outside of their 30-yard line. And Keith Smith, in terms of throwing the ball, was not particularly sharp in the first half for the Wildcats. Well, that's why they have Ortiz Jenkins playing now at quarterback. And uh, Dick Tomey elects to go with Ortiz Jenkins, the junior, who has led Arizona back twice this year when that team has been down by more than 10 points. 
Huskies jumped, then the Wildcats jumped, then Mulatawa Paley made contact. Triplett made the first move, but didn't break the zone, and we'll see which way this goes. It's going to go against Washington, it appears. Play, play, play. Offside, offense, defense. Five yard penalty, still first down. Ortiz Jenkins, from a statistical standpoint, not much of a drop-off from Key Smith. In fact, on a percentage standpoint, he's completed more of his passes. And now has the Wildcats in a first and five situation after that penalty. by Towns he came in a hurry to fill that hole yes he did he came flying up there with authority really got a good hit on him that time and I was watching the linebackers on the backside that time Daryl Daniels in particular see if he stayed home on that play to avoid that big cutback that candidate likes to do you think the backers might add a little talk about that at halftime as we get another look at Ortiz Jenkins the junior from Jordan High in Long Beach California Three rushing touchdowns and a pretty decent ratio of TDs to interceptions. Ranks fourth in the conference in passing efficiency. He'll give to Candidate. Northcutt reverse. I think he was looking to pass, and Triplett pursues him along with Kelly to bring him down. Well, it appeared to be a, a reverse all the way, but not a very nice mesh between Candidate and Northcutt on the handoff. Little shaky, you see here Ortiz Jenkins, he's gonna hand off and then go out and look to block the end man, Kelly, which he tries to do, but uh, good job by the Husky defenders to ward it off and make the play. I thought Northcutt was looking downfield there when he grabbed the ball. He has an 80 yard touchdown run. We showed earlier those all purpose yards, Sonny, with Northcutt and Candidate ranking at first and third in the conference. From an offensive standpoint, they're about all that Arizona has. They give to the up man this time. Lance Briggs, the ball carrier. But it's interesting, Northcutt is the leading receiver and the second leading rusher. Candidate is the leading rusher and the second leading receiver. That's not a lot of balance. Yeah, they are the main men. But watch that Larry Triplett getting a little bit of a double team there, but good blocking up front. And that's the play in the first half where Arizona, you think you're gonna go outside and they sneak that fullback, the big fullback right up the middle. The Wildcats get enough for the first down. Triplett's been playing real well last three or four ball games. Husky defenders all pointing that time as the right guard move. You can hear Lester Towns all the way up here, Todd, <laughs> signaling out the right guard for Arizona, moving a little early. Good ball. Ball start, offense. Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. Shadows starting to lengthen here at Arizona Stadium. We'll chat amongst the Husky defenders as they'll have a first and 15 now. Marvin Brown checking in at a wide receiver spot for Arizona, along with Melosi Leonard, a couple of reserves in for the Wildcats. Candidate tries to pick his way through. Daniels threading through to get him, along with Smith and Farms. Yeah, excellent job, Jeremiah Farms. Responsibility again is not to let him get outside, force everything back inside and let your pursuit make the plays. Excellent job, Jeremiah Farms and the rest of the defense on that play. Got five back on it for a second and 10 situation as Northcutt checks back into the lineup. There's the streak Sonny referred to earlier, and when you get 74 on one snap, it's pretty easy to get to the century <laughs> mark sometimes. Makes it a lot easier. He's had an impressive season. From the gun, Jenkins, looking over the middle, finds the big tight end, Manamaliuna. All the way down inside the 25-yard line as he makes his first contribution of the day. Jermaine Smith on the tackle. Saw the young tight end that time blow right back by Jeremiah Farms on the right side of the screen. See number four in pursuit, but uh, huge tight end. You know, Sonny, that's really the first stretch route down the seam that the Wildcats have thrown all day today. Good call by the Arizona coaches. 
try to get lined up with the linebacker and hopefully your young tight end can outrun him and that time he did. They spotted all the way at the 20 yard line on that one. Candidate out of the eye. Roll around the left side. Towns meets him after five more. They're really running behind Stephen Grace this time. There is a flag on the play, but Grace, that left guard, has been the lead blocker for Candidate here in the third quarter. Well, they go to that short side of the field. You've got Freitas and Grace, 77-66 for Arizona, that both went to high school at Kamehameha in Honolulu. I bet you can't there. do that Bowling. three times. Offense, <laughs> 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. Yeah, one at 6'4", 301, the other at 6'3", 286. It's like hiding behind a wall. There they are right there. Well, you can't blame Candidate for trying to get behind them and get lost in their shadow. They'll take it back to the 30. The Wildcats penalty yardage mounting a little bit. Leonard, the motion man. Under some pressure, throwing underneath for no cut. Drop for a loss by Kelly. AK-47 strikes. Boy, that is, uh, i tell you right there, big rush put on the Arizona quarterback, and Jenkins with a rifle arm got it out to Northcutt, but Anthony Kelly was in great position. Look at the pressure. Muitala Pele was up there right in the middle, and great coverage. I'll tell you, that was just a little glimpse of the strength of Jenkins' arm. Good job by Kelly to get inside that time. Beat the block, made the stop on the dangerous return man for Arizona, the guy with the wheels. All day for Jenkins underneath, off the hands of Candidate Incomplete. Farms putting a little lick on him for good measure. Yeah, he was going to go, excuse me, Jenkins was going to go to Candidate all the way on this play. And Candidate not able to hang on to this ball, which was rifled into the middle. And also, it doesn't help you catch the ball when your arms get a little shorter with those linebackers creeping in on you. Watch Candidate. Farms with a nice uh, contact there, Todd. Yeah, glad he backed off. Huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just a little reminder of what happens if you come back into my house again, Tron. Wildcats need to get to the 20. Jenkins going to scramble, make it to the 10 is where they need to get. The back marker at the 20, and he'll be dropped. Good contained downfield that time by Washington. And good coverage downfield by the Husky defensive backs. Everyone had their man. No one was open downfield. You see Kelly dropping off in coverage from the weak backer position. And Ortiz Jenkins is dangerous right there, but what a great effort to get his feet and knock him down. Now Sean Keel, the walk-on, set to attempt his really first true long field goal of the year. This one would be a 37-yarder, or 47-yarder, rather. They spot it at the 37, has the distance, but misses it. The Huskies bend but don't break, and the Wildcats still can't find anybody to really nail the long boots. Well, that's what the defense wanted to do coming into the ball game is, hey, you've got talented people from Arizona. You've got Kennedy, you've got Northcutt, you've got the two quarterbacks. Hey, you're going to get some yards, there's no question. But they haven't broken, Todd, and that was the key word you just said. Midway through the third quarter, Washington leads it by nine.
Tucson, Washington hanging on to its halftime lead over Arizona, 19 to 10. Husky defensive unit doing its job. Rick Neuheisel is in the position where he wants to be. You're contending for not only a bowl game, but for possibly the conference championship. And of course, a win today for either one of these teams would make them bowl eligible. Sixth win of the year for the Huskies in Arizona because they played 12, needing a seventh victory to be eligible. He's, I think he's thinking beyond any kind of bowl in particular. He wants to shoot for the top, and again, it's all in his team's hands, and that's the best feeling to have when you enter the final weeks of the season, not needing help from anyone else. Well, the Huskies gained 10 yards and acreage down there at holding Arizona with that missed field goal starting from the 30 Todd and that's a big big boost for that offense to start in this third quarter Connick and Shaw in the backfield as Washington gets things started once again and it goes to Mo we get about three Marcus Bell the first man to him Pierce adding in on the stop Marcus Tuiasa Sopo, a sharp, strong second quarter, and overall some very nice first half numbers. And a few of those completions, nine of 16, but a few of those on the run, rolling out and hitting people off of one, one scramble play for the touchdown to, to uh, Gerald Harris was outstanding. Jergens and Harris in now. Shaw got three on the last one. For Jurgens, he caught that one falling backwards and kept the feet in. <laughs> I think in his spare time, he does tight ropes for Ringling Brothers in what the offseason. It was a great job. You see him plant those feet down there and just hung on. And great grab. Way to use the hands and a nice throw again. Those out routes today have just been right on. Delivers the football with authority out there and see the feet. And never, Fantastic. never mind Velcro hands, he has Velcro feet. And he did it beyond the orange marker. Yep. Great pattern run and establishes another first down for Washington. Draw. Arnold breaks one tackle, can't shake free of the leg grasp that time of Joe Tafoya. Joe Tafoya got good penetration that time, right up the gap, center guard, and looks like someone's down there. Looks like uh, J.J. Joe Pru. Hard to tell with all the bodies in there on the big He's defensive play. Yep, staying face down all right, but uh, being talked to now by the trainers. On it. Continuing to take a look at him while he's being attended to. A reminder, Tuesday night, 8 it must see for the hardcore football fan, LT. Let's say anything more, yes. Hall of Fame linebacker Lawrence Taylor, the guest on hardcore football, 10-time All-Pro, three-time defensive player of the year, a member of the NFL 75th anniversary team. He'll talk with Ron Pitts, Bill Moss, Ronnie Lott. If you want to know what goes on inside football, in the trenches, behind the scenes, you can find out on Hardcore Football Tuesday night at 8 on Fox Sports Net and every weeknight. Don't forget Fox Sports News comes your way nightly at 10. Well, the duel in the desert continuing as Washington, all of its points in the second quarter, Still has the lead on the Arizona Wildcats. Total offensive yardage in a single game as Tuiasa Sopo broke Kerry Conklin's mark last week. You're even there, you're everywhere. Hey, you know, they keep these stats for about, well, wow, that was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. It was so long ago, they don't even have film. They, they had to, you know, the guy come out with the glass plates and take a yeah, few shots of your yeah, plays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was, it was, yeah, cave drawings. Nice, yeah, thanks a lot, Bob. No I problem. appreciate that from the truck. No problem. <laughs> uh, it was actually ticker tape. It was, everything was uh, reported they used to, Well, yeah, they sent it back by Pony Express and recreated the game down on the field. With little, yeah, Timmy uh, Cowan on there as well, having a big game. But I'm real, you know, the, this ball game, coming into it, you've got to really be proud of the defense, the way they bottled up the Arizona outside of that one big play. And also, these guys running back on the field, there they are right there. That defensive group right there really came to play so far this afternoon. Hopefully they can keep that going. Yep, they've still got another quarter plus in the heat in Tucson. 
Shaw trying to thread through. A lot of interference that time, and he was not able to get far. He dropped for a loss of about a yard and a half. They were really stacking up in the middle. See Lewis right there, Polk. Arizona defenders really shooting the gaps up front and really snuffed that play. No gain. Yeah, and the Wildcats or a loss, actually. With, with Lewis, that's their number three defensive tackle now. Frazier went out earlier. Jopru, who had shared time, is gone, and so Lewis has to step in at the defensive tackle spot. A senior from Bell, California, who's seen very little action this year. Quick slant for Jurgens, nearly picked as Leland Gales had it come right to him. He didn't really step in. He just had Dewey Osasopo's pass headed for him. He could not hang on, and the Wildcat defense nearly gets the turnover, but they hold Washington. Yeah, so it had to be a quick route right there. Dewey Osasopo leading him a little. Uh, Jurgens just a little bit too far, and Gales almost come up with a miracle interception. Almost looked like Chris wasn't looking when the ball was in the air, too, on that quick route. Fleming on to kick once again. Northcutt standing inside his 20. the side of the foot and they'll spot it just inside the Arizona 40 yard line. Favorable field position for the Wildcats as the Husky defense is called upon to do the job again. Back in Tucson midway through the third quarter of play. Neither team able to put a dent in the scoreboard so far here in the second half but Arizona in good shape after the short punt. remaining at quarterback. They look to run the reverse again. Going to the outside, Melosi Leonard gets a block from Jenkins as well, but after all that, it's only about a yard gain. Tough to gain a lot of yardage when you go 15 yards, nearly 15 yards beyond your own line of scrimmage to do the reverse. They tried this just a couple series ago, last series, as a matter of fact. Now watch this, he gets the handoff way outside, long ways to travel. And good job by the defense. Anthony Kelly again in position to make the play, Todd. And if you're the defense, and all of a sudden that's 25 running the reverse instead of eight, you've got to be a little bit happier to see him coming around the corner. Winnick, the H back, the motion man, leads for Candidate, who turns inside, and again, not a lot. He pushes forward with some nice leg drive for about two yards that time. Farms and Akbar in on the stop. Arizona, every year, it always loves to do the reverses, the throwback to the quarterbacks, uh, all kinds of razzle-dazzle flag football type plays, and so far they've only seen one where they've done that. The Wildcats leading the conference in rushing, but not having a lot of success on the ground thus far against Washington, with the exception of the one run by Candidate. Arms getting to Jenkins, the long throw open, Matt Somebody blew the coverage there. Marvin Brown in for the score. That looked like it was just being thrown up for grabs, and all of a sudden, Brown was 10 yards clear of the secondary. Well, you don't want anybody sneaking behind you, and Bontour that time letting the Arizona receiver get right behind him in a big grab. Marvin Brown with his second touchdown reception of the year. And boy, that is a huge play. Point after touchdown attempt from Keel is good, and we all of a sudden have a two-point ball game, including that missed extra point in the first half, which looms a little larger now. Ortiz Jenkins with the touchdown pass to close the gap. The Arizona Wildcats profiting by the big play, a 74-yard touchdown run, a 55-yard touchdown pass, and they've closed the gap on Washington to two as the Huskies have been very, very silent in the third quarter of play. Washington officially with 20 yards of total offense here in the opening 10 minutes of the third quarter. A little windy down there, have to have a holder come in, but you're right, that's a big play for Arizona, and the crowd gets back into it every time they, they don't do anything. They're very silent, but boy, they get right back into it when they get close. A little bit of good news for the Wildcats. Chopra with a bruised rib. He's expected to return as McDonald drills this one 
through the end zone and Washington will take it on the 20 yard line. Looked like he was heaving it like you said Todd just away way downfield but Von Tour losing sight of Brown. Nice big play for Arizona. Now there's a late flag thrown back at the 15 yard line of Washington. Here's After the, the call. kick was dead. Dead ball, personal foul, kicking team. 15 yard penalty, first and 10. Well, that'll move the Huskies out to the 35 yard line and they'll catch a bit of a break there. Wildcat faithful on hand. Of course, coming into Tucson, all that half the folks could talk about was that basketball scrimmage was going to take place tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see, you see Hall on the sidelines talking to Coach Tomey that uh, and trying to get an explanation from the official on what he did wrong. So a little bit more room for Marcus Tuiasosopo to work with. Conniff takes it, spins, nearly got stripped as he got across the 40-yard line, but managed to hang on to the ball. A little arm tackling right there. Antonio Pierce leading the way for Arizona. Yes, you're right. Everybody from Arizona is going to be going after that football. They can kind of sense a little momentum change with that big play. Huskies need to settle down here, and that was a good start again. I think I've said it about five times today, but six yards on first down is, is a big boost for your offense. Good gain by Connick. Shaw, the single man in this time. Rising in along with Stevens at the tight end, and a big play there by Tafoya. He shot through the line and dropped Shaw for a loss. Tremendous quickness. I blink. The Husky offense can go towards Tafoya head on, but watch him knife through right there. Looked like Kyle Ben was supposed to come over and cut him off, but had no chance to make that play. Maybe it was Matt Fraze. I couldn't quite tell. It's 54 64. He's but done it inside, though. There wasn't yes. anybody going to get to No. It. So now Washington needs to get beyond the 45. And this doesn't necessarily have to be a scoring drive, but they definitely want to eat some clock, gain some yardage, just get some tempo back right now. Under pressure, swinging too tall for Sean. The Huskies will be forced to punt again. The last punt shanked out of bounds, setting up a lot great field position for Arizona. Ryan Fleming needs to settle down now, the punter for Washington, and make sure he gets a nice kickoff. Good hang time because you got Mr. Dangerous back there, Dennis Northcutt, ready to run one back. Yeah, but you can also get the feeling right now all the way around this stadium of people starting to get the scent, getting getting to up on the edge of their seat. Yes, they are. Starting to uh, get a shift in momentum, perhaps. Northcutt, a guy who can add to that with one play. High but short by Fleming. Northcutt's going to stay away from it. And the Huskies are going to get a favorable roll. It'll be down inside the 25-yard line. So Arizona coming back out, trailing by two. Quick reminder as the Wildcats take the field. Tomorrow night, our programming is highlighted by Football News at 6 o'clock. Jim Rome has the last word on everything going on in the world of sports at 6.30. For all your local sports news at 7 o'clock, it's Northwest Sports Tonight. And as always at 10 p.m., Fox Sports News Primetime, just part of the programming schedule tomorrow on Fox Sports Net. Jenkins, who rallied one drive with a touchdown pass, stays on, and Candidate carries it out for a first down to the 34-yard line. Hairston on the stop there. Arizona with a good job of blocking out front for candidates. They elect to go to the strong side this time. Sonny, you've been in this situation before as a player. Just that feeling sometimes that momentum is shifting and you can't do anything about it. What is it like when you're on the field in those sorts of situations? Well, somebody needs to come up with a play, but it feels like it's like, hey, let's just keep doing what we're doing. Let's don't make any mistakes. Don't give the other team an opportunity to make big plays. Unfortunately for the Huskies, they give up a big play to get Arizona back in this ball game. Give again on the little dive to Briggs. He'll get a couple that time. Mulatau Pele in on the stop, along with Jamon Willis. A lot of banging going up inside, and Arizona elects to bang it away, but 
been real impressed with Ortiz Jenkins in a couple of plays. A short play, pass play to Northgate. It didn't really gain anything, but it showed his arm strength. And then on that touchdown play, he was in a lot of pressure. He got it off, and he kind of may look for Ort Jenkins to go deep here again. Hairston on the field along with Madrietta. The Huskies with some reserves getting a little playing time on this series. Off the play action. Going long once again. Flag thrown in the backfield as he overthrows Northcutt, and it would have come back anyway. But Dennis Northcutt was in the clear. Yeah, I just had a feeling that they were going to unleash one here. And good play action. But unfortunately, everything's going to be coming back. The Wildcats are pointing towards the Huskies. Okay. Okay. Well, now you're really thankful that that one was yes. overthrown. Looked to be a hold in the backfield. The flag was thrown in the backfield. Here's the call. Personal foul, 15-yard face mask, defense, at the line of scrimmage, 15 yards from the previous spot, first wow. down. Let's see if we can pick it up in here. Yeah, Mui Tao Pele with his left hand there trying to ward off the blocker. Got it up in the helmet. Yeah, but I don't know if that's a 15-yarder. I don't either, Todd. I Toss for Kennedy as the Huskies come in and drop him for no gain. Good pursuit that time on the backside by Tuwali Mulatawa Pele. Excellent job, number 93, the big arms, going right down the line of scrimmage and getting Kennedy, grabbing his feet behind the line of scrimmage. And, you know, he's come to play to look at the war scars, the scars of the battle on his helmet. Being a little frustrated after that last call, probably, too. Well, he's, he doesn't like to do it. None of the Huskies, I'm sure, are Arizona. You don't want to do things to put your team at a disadvantage. Jenkins calls for a timeout. Arizona, number one. Well, we got almost to the end of the quarter before they called <laughs> one this time, but. The Wildcats will take their first of three and talk things over in this second down situation. Smith now on the sidelines as Jenkins tries to rally the Wildcats. They're threatening to go back in front. Welcome back. You see the homecoming crowd all the way up to the top here at Arizona Stadium and looking for something to get excited about as their Wildcats are threatening to regain the lead against the Washington Huskies. Ortiz Jenkins, the man who made the improbable play a year ago, has guided the Wildcats since the intermission, got them a touchdown. Second and 10 now from the 45. Lots of time for Jenkins and Candidate open on the swing route. Kelly over pursues. Candidate beats a couple guys, gets the first down, and is forced out of bounds at the 31. Sonny had a lot of room after he caught the ball. Really didn't have to worry much turning up field. Well, he's dangerous when you see him get out in the pass route and that in the flat. Or team Jenkins throwing it a long ways across the field and. Kelly looked like he was in pretty good position to contain him, but slippery moves by Candidate. And there's that turf again, that Bermuda grass. With the cleats are tough to dig down inside that stuff. Trips right for the Wildcats. They'll swing it again for Candidate. He gets by Kelly, who appeared to be in position. Bontour, a nice open field tackle, but Candidate gets six more. Trying to spread it out a little bit and get the Husky defenders going out to the sidelines and normally when teams set it up like that they'll come back towards the middle but that was a nice touch pass by Jenkins getting it over Jabari Issa who had actually burst across the line of scrimmage a look at Kelly as the Wildcats go to two in the backfield again Briggs the up man he'll just get a couple then drives forward even further and picks up the first down at the 20 now, Sonny, what the Huskies were doing on offense, breaking tackles in the first half, the Wildcats are starting to do as he ran through Kelly and Towns that time. Yeah, he did this also in the first half. Very powerful legs on this young man. And right there, you see Lester Towns coming in, but not be able to hang on to the ankles of that big young man right there, 32. My gosh, uh, Lance Briggs, good run. Freshman from Sacramento. 
has given them another first down. And the Wildcats apparently will, yep, they'll take another snap before the end of this third quarter. And it's Briggs against, tripped up that time. Mulatawa Pele and Issa both there. And that'll bring the third quarter to a close. The Wildcats, however, are in the red zone and threatening to take the lead. Three quarters in the books. Mulatawa Pele in the defense will try to shut down the Wildcats once again. We'll return to Tucson after this. Welcome you back to Tucson in the shade of the Santa Catalina Mountains. We're ready to start the fourth quarter. Can't pick it along the sunny six killer as the Washington Huskies try to maintain their pursuit of the Pac-10 Conference Championship. They lead Arizona going into the fourth quarter. Two big plays have accounted for much of the Wildcats offense in the third quarter. You see it was all Arizona, 145 yards of total offense to Washington's 21. Boy, what a huge quarter. And the Wildcats are at the 20-yard line now. Jenkins off to the left side. Issa doing a nice job to come off a of block, Sonny. He really did has. He's got that quickness for such a big guy that he can just hammer it down. And, and you need to with Ortiz Jenkins. You know, Tuyasa Sopo likes to run for the Huskies, but Jenkins is a little bit bigger and a little bit stronger. You know, the defense has done a solid job throughout three quarters here, but you just want to get them off the field, let them get a little bit of rest, especially in the heat. Well, the second quarter, it was to the Huskies' advantage to be on the field against the Arizona defense, and now Arizona carrying over into the beginning of this fourth quarter. Big third down play for the Huskies, third and five. They line up strong to the right side with Manu Maliuna and Winnick. Candidate up the middle, big hole. Good go, will go. Touchdown, Wildcats. He coasted into the end zone for one of the few times there wasn't anybody there to meet him. No, nobody for the Huskies up the middle. Penalty, though, false start. Wow. I didn't see the flag or hear a whistle before he took off. It came over on the near sideline. Maybe one of the wide receivers jumped a little bit. How costly would that be? They don't even figure in the play. Only six men on the line. Offense, wow. five-yard penalty. Repeat third down. <laughs> Take those six back off the board. Ooh. Rick Neuheisel loves that call. What a huge penalty, Todd. Big scoring play. Well, normally when you see, uh, look at the offensive lineman there, the wide receiver is flanked back, well, not there, on the line. There's your six right there, so nobody else outside of that group was in the zone. So somebody made an alignment mistake outside of that bunch. And another whistle now looked as though the left side of the Arizona line jumped. Arizona not. That's another one of their backup tight ends, James Hugo, a redshirt freshman who's coming in. Good ball. Ball start. Offense. Three tight penalty. end alignment. Feet Back to the Wildcats five more yards. How's that for a turn of events? <laughs> I'll tell you. Two big penalties on the Wildcats, and Ortiz Jenkins can't believe it. He's done a remarkable job all season coming in in the second half, and you can see why so far in this third quarter and beginning of the fourth quarter. He'll be back one more year. Maybe have the helm to himself next year, but you never know. Trying to run a draw from the gun. Steps inside, firm, scrambling. He'll be short of the first down, but well down into field goal range where it becomes much more of a chip shot for Sean Keel. And if the Huskies can get away with just giving up three here as opposed to the score, what a break that would be. Heel one for two, you see. Made the short one, missed the longer one. Well, he's going to be on the far hash mark. See how he navigates this kick. This one will be a 31-yarder. Halleck, the punter, is the holder. Huskies are hoping he pushes or pulls this kick. And the walk on, missed it, just to the left of the stick. Two missed field goals. The touchdown called back on the penalty, and the Huskies cling to their lead. What a break for the Huskies. Rick Neuheisel breathing a little easier on the sidelines. 
A little bit of an exhale there. Yeah. Washington will have the ball of the 20 as the walk-on freshman misses again. Part of the traveling contingent. For all we know, that could be a Snowbird Husky maybe down here for more than just today's game. That's all right. He's got his sweetheart with him. That's all that matters. And he's got his colors on, and his team's still out in front. The Huskies need to find some offense here in the second half. Fourth quarter performances have been strong of late. They start out with Shaw. Now there's what Marcus Tuiasosopo has done in fourth quarter is really lifting his game, his completion percentage up usually, and both passing and rushing, he's been phenomenal in fourth quarters of contest. That is very true. The whole season, and Marcus Tuiasosopo has another opportunity now with the lead to get this offense down there on a long drive, eat some clock, get that time of possession back in their, huge, in their favor. Shaw, big hole right side. Bell there along with Tafoya. They closed it quickly, held him to just a couple. Yeah, you know, during the timeout, we both talked about it, and Husky offensive play calling has gone a little conservative here in the second half. Not a lot of yardage in that third quarter, which went all to Arizona. But this is the fourth quarter, and as that last stat showed, Todd, it should be a little more yardage for the Huskies. Yeah, but the Huskies are in a totally unfamiliar position, leading at the start of the <laughs> yeah, fourth quarter. Right. <laughs> They've had to come from behind in recent weeks. They'd like to just hold the lead for the final 15 minutes. Option time. Shaw. Spins. Got the first down with the extra effort. Huge effort right there by Mo Shaw. And again, out front, Pat Connor, 47 for the Huskies, making some good contact. And Maurice Shaw right here at the end, stringing it out. Tuyaso Asasopo stringing it out, breaking tackles right there. Missed tackle from the Wildcats, allows him to pick up the first down. Pierce finally dropped him, but he got it by a half a yard. And Mo Shaw, who's been big in fourth quarters as well. Takes it up to 58 for the game. Shaw once again, they just keep calling his number right now. Somebody's helmet popped off on that one as Polk and Briggs, who does double duty as the running back and a linebacker, come in on the stop. North gets played to the secondary at times. Dick Tomey not afraid to use his athletes on both sides of the ball. Well, that's, that's true that he's done that for years down here. At that time, Kyle Ben losing his helmet, trying to block somebody up front for Maurice Shaw coming out now. Arnold in, Kevin Ware coming in as well for Anthony Meisen at one of the tight end spots. Washington trying to be efficient, use some clock and get the drive going. Well, with the double tights, you figure they want to bang it a little bit. So they come back and cross everybody up, throwing for Looker. Just through his fingertips, and I'll tell you, I think he got a little bit of a shove from Hunter out there. Yeah, it sure appeared that way from up here. But as a receiver looking back into setting sun, it's a tough grab anyway, a little high, but it looked at, like there was a little contact. Hunter was beaten on the play. We'll take uh, another look at it from an angle. Look at that sunshine though, Todd. That's tough on your concentration. Yeah. But and I, you and I both think the push came really before that cut even. Yes. From Hunter when he beat him there. So now the Huskies are faced with another third and long to try to convert. Wildcats again stunning around. Good roll out by Tuiasa Sopo. Throws first down, 43 yard line. Harris with the grab. Bell that made the tackle, but what a great cut. Well, it was just a great move by the quarterback. Again, it shows the danger. Dangerous to Asasopo getting outside and Gerald Harris again finding an open spot after he saw his quarterback get out. Right now he knows his quarterback's outside the pocket. He comes back, settles down in a good location, but got racked right there by Marcus Bell. Yeah, he got his bell rung, as it were, <laughs> and Hunter there as well. And uh, I think he rung them both up on that Harris, one. Harris, yeah, stepped off the field after that one, but he gets a big first down. A couple of big third down plays now. Sean bouncing off Tuiasa Sopo a little bit, will get nowhere. Deshaun Polk, Antonio Pierce from the backer spots on the stop. 
Yeah, a little mix-up back there. They collided, which disrupted the whole football play. And usually you, you might get your feet tangled up with your offensive lineman, particularly your center. But right there, it looked like Marcus wanted to make sure that he made the handoff. And, you know, even though you've been running these plays since two-a-days, Todd, he still did not do any of those handoffs this week in practice. And once in a while, he'll be off, off the line. In on grass as opposed to turf. A lot of different things. Arnold in for Shaw on second down. You have to make the pitch quick. He does. Arnold pulled down. Flag thrown down the field as well. And a flag thrown back at the line of scrimmage. So there's going to be two separate penalties. I think there may be a downfield hold on the Huskies, and I'm afraid the one inside the line is probably going to be a hold as well. Both of them are holding. Yeah, you, receivers downfield trying to stay on their blocks, but I, I was real impressed that time. Marcus Bell with his speed to get outside and make that play on Paul Arnold. And Haroon was face up on Tui Asasopo after he was only able to take about a step that time. Yes, he was, and it was well defended that time by the Wildcats. Sonny, we talked a little bit during a break that Washington has been running the ball inside and not looking to get outside, allowing Arizona to fly at him a little bit here in the second half. Yeah, they have, and you need to have success doing a little bit of both. You got to, outside sets up the inside. You got to hammer inside to get outside. And that time, Arizona just had the right defense call. Two holding penalties on the play. First one is declined. The second one is enforced from the previous spot. 10 yard penalty, still second down. How do we know they didn't decline the second one and take the first one instead? <laughs> I mean, it, that's just an arbitrary thing. What do you mean the first one? He could have, anyway. Inside the line was one of the calls. Look at 71, Chad Ward. And it, we saw that from Arizona in the first half. Chad Ward with a nice tackle on his man, just riding him into the turf. But again, you just see that speed out there. Marcus Bell making the play. That's why he's one of the good ones around the conference. Takes Washington all the way back to the 35-yard line. Penalty numbers continuing to mount. They've been big ones when the Huskies have had them today. Double coverage. Harris made the catch. How did he haul that one in? That one had danger written all over it, and he beat the two defenders. Oh my gosh, he had great pain out there, and Kelvin Hunter, you talk about knife and a ball, if that's the right term. Look at Rick Neuheisel. It was a huge sigh, yeah. Yes, watch Gerald Harris on this. You see pain coming out to double team. That comes from scouting reports right there. Payne recognized right away that they were going to go close corner route. And absolutely great grab by Harris. Yeah, but if Payne runs a stronger cover right there, they're in big trouble. Instead, it's a first down Washington. Harris with the concentration and the grab. He has been big throughout the day. From the Arizona 45. Harris. Shaw, rather, excuse me, carrying off the left side. Pierce coming down to stop him along with Robertson. Hey, Todd, coming in this ball game, it's a point if you're with Arizona, the confidence of the coaches is that they have the guys up front to be able to sustain and get a long drive going. And they're proving that right now so far with eight and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Look at Gerald Harris, 71 big yards and nothing bigger than that last reception for a first down. Austin in. Marcus with time throwing for the big tight end. Stevens couldn't hang on. Tough coverage on that one. And he's a little bit slow to get up now. Antonio Pierce there along with Rafael Jones. Very catchable ball, however, but Tui Asasopo got racked again. Mike Robertson coming in on the pressure just lays him away. Watch Robertson coming from the bottom of the screen. All out right there. Helmet right in the chest. A little uh, distraction there. Rafael Jones on Jeremy Stevens loses a little bit of concentration and doesn't wrap it in. Wildcat fans on their feet again on another big third down for Washington. Sideline Elstrom, first down. 32-yard line, and he beat Gales again. There have been, on this series, three big receptions, and they have been picking on Leland Gales 
all afternoon. That time, Todd Elstrom with a big grab. Little play action fake, but nice block up front, stuffing the linebacker coming through. And that's what you have those running backs back there. They got to run, but they got to block. And Sonny, three big third down conversions from a team that's ninth in the conference in converting third down plays. Good point, Todd. That's excellent point. Conniff up band for Shaw on first down, and it's Conniff off the left side. Bounces off a couple of men. You know that elusive momentum we were talking about before, Sonny? You can hear a little bit of the hooping and the hollering on the Washington sideline again, and it's swinging back. Absolutely. I've never seen a game with so many changes with momentum, and anything can do it. It looked like the big penalties that knocked off the scoring opportunity for Arizona opened it up for the Huskies to get able to do what they like to do, and that's win the battle in the trenches and move the ball downfield. Wildcats still enjoying the total offensive advantage, 336 to 308 right now. But another good gain by Conniff on first down. Shaw, huge hole, couldn't get to it that time, and Bell there to meet him. Yeah, it's, he saw the hole and tried to get those old feet going in the right direction and just lost his balance. He had room to pick up that first down. Unfortunately, he loses his footing. Yep, that would have been another good pickup, and he would have been able to get to it easily. But you talked about that turf. Looks pretty. It's staying green this time of year, but it can be treacherous <laughs> to the yeah, visitors. Right. So again, the Wildcat fans try to urge their unit on. Washington needs to get to the 22. Shaw, the lone setback. Quick drop fade route for Harris. Twists, catches it first and goal, Washington. Gerald Harris is living up to the potential expected of him today. I tell you, since he had the unfortunate opportunity to catch a touch, he did drop that one pass in the first half. He has been on fire receiving the ball in the second half. And right here, Tuyasa Sopo throwing to the outside shoulder. Outside shoulder throw, and I'll tell you what, that's uh, he's got to be happy with that grab and throw. He's got to be happy with whoever called that one for him, too. First and goal at the four-yard <laughs> line. Harris playing hurt a little bit. Five catches for 92 yards for Harris and a score. Time timeout out. called Arizona. by two. Arizona. They've burned their second timeout. Will that come back to haunt them a little bit? But right now, Dick Tomey wants to get a rest for his defense. Yeah, they have been out there. Not only have they been out there, they've allowed the Huskies to get deep down. It's first and goal at the four for the Huskies. When we return to Tucson, you're watching Pac-10 football on Fox Sports Net. Back in Tucson, a first and goal for the Washington Huskies since the missed field goal. The Huskies have used seven minutes and 15 seconds on this drive. It is a 14 play, 76 yard drive thus far and has taken them to the Wildcat four yard line. Conniff and Shaw in the backfield. Elstrom and Looker will split out to the left side. Shaw cuts back, gets a couple before he's dropped. Bell there, as always, for Arizona, along with Antonio Pierce. Straight ahead play, power play, Conifin blocking at fullback position, and not too bad for the Huskies on first down. Now a second down, and just outside, just, just outside three yards. Means that clock keeps ticking down, Todd, and gets down to the low five-minute mark. Triple tight end set this time for the Huskies. Stevens, Meisen, and Ware all in, along with Conniff and Shaw. It's Meisen in motion. Shaw bounces off one, bounces off another, takes it down to about the one-yard line. Some of the toughest yards of the day for Mo Shaw. That was some rattling going on down there. Helmet to helmet, Maurice Shaw. Got that power running formation in there with the three tight ends and Pat Conniff. Watch the left side. Oh. Took on Payne and knocked him back. Payne will feel that one tomorrow. Husky coaches substituting again, motioning to players. The tight ends come out. Elstrom and Harris are back in. From the 
31 yard line. Stevens flanks as well. Flag thrown. Play clock expired. Took him a while to get the substitutes in and it cost him that time. Dead ball, delay a game, offense. At this stage of the ball game, though, Todd, Rick Neuheisel is correct in pointing to that clock because young Tuyasa Sopo has to remember they have three timeouts. Don't want to get back on the six yard line. Unfortunately, he didn't do that. They still have three timeouts, but they've got a little bit further to go. That's a great point, Sonny. Washington hanging on to the ball in this quarter. They want to hang on to it for about six more yards worth right now. Same alignment. Looking for Stevens. Double cover. Oh, touchdown. The big guy yanks it in. He just, he just literally walled everybody else <laughs> off. And at 6'7", you're not going to get around him. Uh, if they do, it's going to be interference. That time, it's like throwing a rebound up to the big forward. And Rick Neuheisel is extremely happy with that. It's a short alley-oop. Well, it looks like it was the same. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> same play that was called. They had called originally as we're getting ready for the extra point, but they stuck with the play. And electing to still go for one rather than two to stretch it out to 10 points. Anderson through the uprights. The lead back to nine and an impressive drive. 80 yard touchdown drive. Jeremy Stevens caps it with his fourth touchdown catch of the year. The Dogs lead it by nine. And the quarterback just a little bit pumped after that 80 yard drive. Hats in hand, the Huskies are gonna turn it over to the defense with a nine point lead. I know that Rick Neuheisel at practice when he gets to this point, he likes to see that gold helmet, Husky helmet in the air. Just another routine day. Gutty performance, <laughs> yeah, for that young man. Anderson with a good drive this time. A little confusion amongst the returners, but Kroon will take it. And hanging on, guess who's there again? Curtis Williams. Yes. Designated tackler on special teams, particularly on kickoffs. Right here, as I said, it looked like it may have been the same play that was called from the one. Just throw it up for grabs, and even Marcus Bell, as good as he is, could not get up that to Jeremy Stevens's height. Yeah, they would have needed to put in a quick phone call to Lou Olson for help on that one. Yeah, I can get that high if I have one of those little trampolines. A little air ram, <laughs> yeah. Fourth touchdown catch of the year for Jeremy Stevens. Jenkins has gone all the way in the second half. throws his receiver good coverage for the Huskies but Bobby Wade could not get to the ball sunny important here for the secondary and the team not to get too complacent too relaxed and sit back in a mode of prevent well it, you know you're right but on that particular play the front you see Keith Smith looking at the play wishes he was in there throwing the football but the front got a pretty good rush on they got a good push up field forced Jenkins to throw the bad pass Got away from Farms, never even saw him though. Throws intercepted. Von Tour again. Breaks a tackle. He will score. Whoa. Anthony Von Tour's second touchdown of the year. He is sixth interception and third in two weeks. The defense maybe puts the exclamation point on this one. See Keith Smith and the rest of the players watching the the play, but Anthony Von Tour making up for that big touchdown pass that was thrown over the top of him, Todd. I'll tell you, what a way to make up for it. Yeah, that puts him at a, a net zero on the plus minus now. <laughs> Anderson on to attempt the extra point. And all of a sudden, the fans are pouring out of Arizona Stadium. 
It is a sea of red headed down the decks and out the gates. Here's Von Tour's pick. Oh, yeah, Orte Jenkins trying to force it in there, but Anthony Von Tour in a perfect position, and I love that move on Jenkins to get past him and get into the end zone. What a big play for Von Tour. The sophomore from a great program, De La Salle. There you see, single-handedly has passed up <laughs> last year's team total. Yeah, we'll see his name on a list pretty soon, besides Tuyasa Sopo. An ill-advised ball, and it all started with that great backside pressure from Farns. I was really surprised. I think Jenkins must have heard footsteps, because he never saw him at all. Either that or Jeremiah closed his eyes before he was going to deliver <laughs> the guess. ball. Whatever, it all worked out. You gotta just kinda keep everybody contained right now and uh, remind them we've still got some time to go. Husky special teams out pointing to their fans, telling them to get pumped. It's been a tale of two quarters for the Huskies today. All second quarter, they got the 19, then they get back-to-back -back strikes right here in the fourth. Fourth quarter scoring for Washington against its opponents this year has got to be phenomenal. Unbelievable. And that young man right there, no, not Gunner in the sunglasses, Tuiasa Sopo, coming out with a great effort again this afternoon, leading this team down on that huge drive. Well, by quarters, not as impressive. They've only outscored their opponents by 31 now, 90 to 59, with those scores. Y'all done now? I'm all done. Got, got your pictures taken? Well, I love these Husky fans down here, and I just like to take some of that home with me, Todd. I don't blame you. It's been a, a dog day in the desert as the buttons promoted. And he didn't have to do it single-handed this time either. <laughs> Had a little bit of help there, but there's a Bonjour getting great talking to from Rick Neuheisel. Love that move he made along the sidelines past Jenkins to get the touchdown. Anderson waiting once again. Oh, this one's going deep. Wade's going to just saunter back. He'll make a catch on it, but that's all he can do. Anderson sprinting down the field all the way into the end zone as well as the Husky defense takes the field. Time for us to look at our GM drive of the day, brought to you by your GM dealers. Tuiasa Sopo to Shaw here. Absolutely good play, good blocking downfield. Gerald Harris and Conniff in the blocking. And a beautiful throw and great catch by Gerald Harris. Both of those third down conversions and the catch by Elstrom. And another third down conversion, great job. And the pass to Stevens to cap it. Alley oop. That's our GM drive of the day. Look at that, nine minutes and 13 seconds. Gotta be the longest drive of the year in terms of clock time. And then Von Tour capped it with the interception return for the touchdown. Jenkins scrambling, throws, batted down. Towns, I think, got a hand on that, and Jermaine Smith was there too. Absolutely, and Mui Tao Pele was back there, almost had the jersey of, of Jenkins, and again, Jenkins was able to get away, but Lester Towns. a Little bit of a smile on that young man's <laughs> face right now. He knows he's got a little more work to get done. 14 points as a result of the turnovers, and I was gonna save one particular number till the end of the game as Jenkins finds Northcutt. He'll get the first down at the 35 and be swarmed under there. One number we have not seen at all today, Sonny. Washington turnovers. Zero turnovers after all the problems they've had with the ball the last couple of weeks. They played an error-free game up to this point. A lot of the throws were not the risk-type throws that Tuyasa Sopo completed this afternoon. A lot of out routes, well run, well caught by the receivers, every one of them coming up with big catches. Jenkins looking under again. North cut, first down. He'll get extra yardage and step into Husky territory at the 49. He's starting to give a little bit more of that cushion. Yeah, Roderick Green out there on coverage on North cut, and you don't want to give him all the turf out there. Got to play a little tighter on him. Look at that, 10 yards, still 10 yards, even more now, allowing Northcutt to get some big yardage and get out of bounds and stop the clock. 
Hawkins up with his fifth catch of the day. He is now moved to the number three in the Pac-10 career receiving list, moving by Johnny Morton, and he'll add to it a little bit more. Only get a couple of yards that time as Green strings him out. He also extends his streak of 40 consecutive games with a catch, which is also a conference record. But he's already caught three passes here. Really not utilized this afternoon by the Arizona coaching staff. Not really in the play. Give credit to the Husky defense for making sure that he had double coverage and different disguises to make sure he was held in check. Yep, those two big plays were responsible for 14 of those 17 Arizona points. And against this team, which is a talented scoring team, holding's going to be called on that. Jenkins is going to go down as Kelly brings him down. Boy, there's a young man that's had a good afternoon coming into this ball game. And uh, Anthony Kelly, you called him the AK-47, and I tell you, he's really played the second half here. Huskies will take the sack, obviously. You missed it right there just a little bit, but they're a little holding on Larry Triplett coming up the middle. <laughs> Pumped up. Just a bit. A sophomore from Aldadena, California. Going to be heading down south next week. Anxious moments, but they get a little less frost with a 16-point lead. Is decline. Decline. Third down. The Wildcats have a bundle. There's about 24. This is the emptiest I've ever seen Arizona Stadium. Well, he's right. We are going to the Rose Bowl to play UCLA. Yeah. <laughs> Six weeks earlier than we want to be there, but uh, next week the UCLA Bruins on on a blitz. Jenkins gets away. Lobs for Northcutt. 35-yard line and a first down for Arizona. Northcutt doing the smart move. He sees the cornerback come on the blitz. Anthony Vontour back there to get Jenkins, but Jenkins eludes him and finds Northcutt, who had broken downfield, and Hakeem Akbar couldn't get over there, just couldn't get over there in time. Sees he's gone, there's Akbar, but what? And he slips again on that nice grass again. It's been pretty nice grass for the Huskies so far today. Outside and complete this time, Marvin Brown, who had the big touchdown catch, he'll get another first down. Tell you what, though, Sonny, you don't want to let him come back too bad because this is two scores and two two-point conversions to tie it. No, then in this game, nothing's ever a given. Time out, Washington, number one. And the Huskies will give the defense a little bit of a rest now as we're inside of three minutes, but you don't want to let the Wildcats get a little momentum and bounce right back. Washington trying to close this one out against Arizona. We'll be back to do the same in a minute. Marcus Tuiasosopo taking a breather for a sec. Defense trying to get some pressure on now on Jenkins. Four guys bearing down on him. He uh, throws that in the vicinity of Trung Candidate. The four horsemen, huh? The four big dogs coming after him. And Jenkins, such a great athlete, able to get out, out race him. Our Magnolia moment today brought to you by Magnolia Hi-Fi. Sonny, a great pick. Absolutely. Ortiz Jenkins trying to force one in there. Anthony Vontour making up for a big mistake this afternoon, but right there he's able to score and help the Husky cause this afternoon. Great effort. Second interception return for a touchdown this year for Vontour, and as we said, he's sixth overall. That last one, the first incomplete pass that Jenkins has thrown on this drive as the Wildcats have moved down the field in a little over a minute. A juggle there underneath for Northcutt. Breaks through. Big open field tackle right there at the 10-yard line as Williams hit him. But another first down for the Wildcats, and they go over 400 yards of total offense for the game. Good call. Get the ball in the hands of your most exciting and explosive player. But a big hit, not only on special teams, but in that safety position. Williams coming up to knock him down. This Husky defense has done a pretty good job against two of the country's best offensive units the last two weeks. First Stanford this week, Arizona, which is fifth in the country in total offense. Jenkins fights off Farms through the end zone. Incomplete. Nice stiff arm out there. Ortiz, Ortiz Jenkins. Talk about strong. He just kind of slides him away, swats him away. and Right here at the end, Jeremiah Farms, boom! Knocks him down. Good play. 
Unfortunately for him, nobody opened downfield. Wade pretty well covered that time along the sideline. second heroics a year ago, still trying to get his team in it. Waits, waits, throws, Northcutt comes clear. Oh, that's not Northcutt, that's Wade, sorry. Yeah, Bobby Wade. Slant. It's all right. A lot of people run in different directions down there inside the 10 yard line. Clock still running. Third down as he sprints him out in a hurry. Trying to throw a little fade route, everybody pretty well covered. Now an option roll, tries to tuck it up himself, scrambles, dives. Not nearly as impressive a flip, but he gets into the end zone. Jenkins uh, either tired or shaken up, one of the two. May have landed on the football. And yeah, that always hurts. Good play. Ortiz Jenkins with the rushing touchdown. He is fourth of the year. Yeah, I think you're right, Sonny. He did bounce on the ball a little bit now. This conversion alone perhaps becomes the biggest defensive play in the drive. We'll watch Jenkins take it in first. Used a lot of time looking. He was going to his left to Bobby Wade. Not open over there. Comes back to this side. Great coverage by the Huskies inside the red zone, inside the 10. And again, a nice leap. And right there, he lands on yeah. his side and the ball. They forgot that he was going to go uh, up high once again. But if they can defend the two-point conversion here, it would force the Wildcats into two additional scores, even if they're able to come up with the onside kick. But before all that, don't forget, right after our game, an encore presentation of Sunday Night Fights. Ten-round heavyweight bout, Jorge Luis Gonzalez, 28-5 with 26 KOs. will take on Tommy Martin and WBC Continental America's light heavyweight champ, Ray Berry, defends his title against Derek Harmon. It's Gonzalez against Martin. Berry against Harmon. Sunday night fights right after our game tonight here on Fox Sports Net. Don't forget at 10 o'clock, Fox Sports News Prime Time comes your way with a complete wrap up of the day's activities. Well built young man there. Yeah, he is a 16. Very athletic again with the big dive to get into the end zone. And in a hurry, too. Yeah, really. two minutes. And, you know, it's like you said, Todd. You know, it's, you play prevent defense and let them eat up yardage and score. So interesting now, Smith, who has not taken a snap the entire half, has to toss the headgear on and try to get the two-point conversion. They line up trips to the right. Out of the play action, throws up in the air, still available, batted. Be. Boy, yeah, the Husky defenders look like they were trying to catch it for a pick, but all they really should do is just knock it down so no one has an opportunity to hang on to it. Looked like a matter of just out muscling the Husky defender. There's the pop up in the air. Yeah, he just wrestled it away at the last second. Looked like, I think it was Daniels trying to come back and get a piece yes, of it. Yes, it did look like that. Keith Smith picks up a vital two-point conversion. See him get congratulated by that ex-Husky QB, Dwayne Aquino. You have a lot of crossing over between these two staffs. Steve Axman, former assistant coach here at Arizona, now on the Husky staff. Got the hands people in here now, Todd. Went on from being an assistant here to becoming the head coach at Northern Arizona. Onside kick attempt. Husky step up. They're marking it short of the 10. Levi Madrieta. Madrieta came up with it. Yep, Elstrom was also there, but Madrieta comes up with it. And that is a big possession for the Huskies. Arizona with one timeout. They can only stop it once with a minute and 32 seconds to go. Good job by Levi Madrieta. What a freshman ball player he has been this season. One first down would be sufficient for the Huskies to close out the clock, close out the game. Well, just protect the football right here. Make sure you wrap it up because you know the Cats are going to be clawing for it.
trying to hold him up and then take a swat at the ball. Luna, the first tackler there, and the Wildcats will use their final timeout. Their final timeout. Jim Springer with a little emphasis there to make sure <laughs> everybody knows it. The Huskies will need to get a little bit more yardage here to close things out. Don't forget tonight at 9 o'clock after the fights, going deep with Chris Myers. Tonight, athletes who bend the rules with the consensus seems to be if they can get away with it, they'll cheat and also a couple of guys you might not know about, the flamboyant owners of the Sacramento Kings. Yeah, they got Williams, who's flamboyant on the court, but off the court, Joe and Gavin Maloof are flashy, young, and unpredictable. That's going deep tonight at 9 o'clock on Fox Sports Net. Well, a couple of missed field goals prevented the Wildcats from ever gaining the lead. The Huskies' no. long drive, plus the interception by Von Tour. Now Tuiasa Sopo gets caught by Bell. Where are they going to mark it? Just short of the first down. It also, however, stops the clock. Well, we've got a quick minute. want to thank our producer, Bob Camion, our director, Bill Cooper, for their great job down in the truck today. Glenn Capilotto has been our statistician. Peter Zeust, our spotter. Nine yards on the play. It'll be third down one from the 35 yard line. The Huskies are going to raise their Pac-10 record to 5-1. Elstrom being attended to. I think he took a pop in that onside kick. Yes, he did. A little woozy right there on the sideline, but Dennis Seeley will make sure he's okay. Six wins in their last seven games for the Huskies if they close this one out. Shaw, first down, he almost did what he did a week ago. <laughs> nearly went to the races. Nearly broke it. But... Again, Marcus Bell with a who else? Score driving stopping tackle right there. But I thought he was gone. That run did accomplish what was needed. It picked up the first down, and that'll close things out for the Huskies. They can sit on it the rest of the way now and head home with a big, big road victory. Boy, it's gonna make that plane ride a little easier, Todd. The Arizona team with some momentum as well. They'd won four out of their last five. You can hear the officials down there. They're telling them it's all over. Just give it up. Wildcats trying to strip it away. When uh, Tuiasa Sopo just take a couple steps back and drop a knee and stay away from the action. Long year for Dick Tomey. His team, of course, predicted as a potential national title contender before dropping the opener to Penn State. They come back with strong play of late. They will lose one today, however, to the Huskies, and Washington will be able to watch the clock count down. The Huskies move to 5-1. and one. Rick Neuheisel gets the victory. A lot of mutual respect between not only the coaches, but the players, as Dick Tomey congratulates Rick Neuheisel on the victory. Tuiasa Sopo had the big drive when it counted, going over nine minutes. And the ad of the pick by Von Tour wrapped it up for the Huskies. So for Sonny Six Killer, I'm Todd Pickett, saying so long from Arizona Stadium in Tucson. The final score, Washington 33, Arizona 25. Next week, we'll be at the Rose Bowl as the Huskies take on the UCLA Bruins. You can catch the action Sunday at 4. Stay tuned. You've been watching Husky football on Fox Sports Net. Coming up next, the Sunday night fights. And tonight, for all your sports scores and highlights, don't miss Fox Sports News primetime at 10 o'clock. For our entire crew from the desert in Arizona, so long until next week at the Rose Bowl.